Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Plutonium Show. You have a, your resident Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Miss Pluto. Not a Mrs. Yes. <laughs> um, hosting, once again. And we thank you for choosing to click on this video and uh, share your very precious time with us. And I hope you are entertained and informed. I'd like to thank the sponsors of this podcast over at Patreon, our lovely patrons. And if you would like to support this podcast for free, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and like the video. Also, we are on Instagram at Lost Beyond Pluto. The link is in the description box, or you can just uh, what was that? <laughs> or you can just type it in um, onto Instagram. We're the only ones with that handle. If anyone else has a similar name with numbers or weird underscores or whatnot, that's not us. Whatever is in the description box is the only legitimate account. Um, it is back to private mode for reasons that we will get into when we discuss. A bit of a, it's, it's a, it's more of a lighthearted, funny kind of segment, but with a little bit of a dark twist, because that's reality. <laughs> There's no point to disliking anymore. No. I mean, Good I guess job, there, Susan. there is behind the scenes, but people can't see it. It's already in place and it looks wrong and it looks messed up. I still can't believe that's a thing. Me it too. It still does my head in, but as we'll get in today when we do mention activision there's what a company wants you to think and mm. then there's what a company is actually doing behind the yeah. scenes so for sure ah. so yeah no dislikes go figure uh the dislike comments are already not not in our videos i haven't caught it but i've seen it on other mm -hmm. videos where people just literally comment dislike it's ridiculous and the thing is that real creators actually want to want dislikes they Absolutely. want people to be able to voice their opinion yeah. because it's freedom of speech and as soon as you take that away, well, that's dangerous, isn't Absolutely. it, Susan? Absolutely. This is YouTube is very quickly becoming a joke. I think they've even gone back on their. For a while this year, they were uh, they kind of became more reasonable with um, suitability of videos for monetization, and in the sense that you can say certain words and it won't get demonetized as long as you're not giving any graphic detail or you're not really lingering on the topic and making people unsettled. Now they went back to their archaic kind of. A much more, a lot more strict version of um, restrictions because when it happened, I saw a couple of our older podcasts were demonetized, and I was like, I, I manually reviewed them, and they, they're monetized. But literally, you can have a monetized, you can have monetized content for months and months and months, or even years, and then suddenly, because the rules get updated or the guidelines get updated, they um, retrospectively, or is that the word? They suppose, yeah. yeah, they just apply the new rules on all the old videos that used to adhere to the the, the rules back then. It's, it's so stupid. so dumb. And so, that's the great thing about the Patreon exclusive videos is that we can just let loose. We can just say what we mean. We don't have to go, oh, gee, Susan might demonetize this one word, yeah. even though it's a key part of the issue. Yeah. It's just, it's so liberating to be able to speak freely. Yeah. You know, and the fact that we can't speak freely on this platform means there's a huge problem with the platform so yeah so i want to start off by um shedding light on this really amazing story that happened recently in london that i actually learned through lady c but i was just so amazed by it if it's 100 percent true because you'll understand how some things are not confirmed yet uh basically there is this cab driver in london who let's go straight up to his name is david perry and he was injured when a homemade bomb exploded after he picked up a passenger from liverpool and then pulled up outside liverpool women's hospital on sunday morning which was remembrance day mm. so the passenger has been or rather the incident has been identified as a terrorist act because am i even allowed to say that word um no i don't know i don't know well i guess we'll out. find out i guess we'll find out um so it, it went off but the the bravery or the 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 main kind of um the thing that makes the story outstanding is the cab driver mr david perry apparently locked the 
taxi doors, the cab doors, with the passenger inside to keep him in. Wow. And risked his life to make sure he doesn't get out and detonate it. I haven't heard of this. Yeah, wow. I know. That's why I had to share it because I yeah. heard it through Lady C, not her latest episode, the one before. So, um, he didn't die. David. What? David is alive and oh that's why he's, he's just been discharged from hospital. Oh my gosh. And um, with... Uh, I mean, his injuries were not exactly minor, but he's alive. Yeah. His own wife says he's lucky to be alive. And so that's why I'm saying some aspects of the story, according to this article from the BBC, um, are apparently not um, confirmed, including whether he actually locked the cab yeah. doors. So that's what is circulating in the news. But David himself hasn't confirmed anything as of yet because he's been yeah. in treatment. But if it's true, which I have a feeling it is, even I think um, Boris Johnson mm. uh, talked about him and congratulated him and people are saying he deserves a medal. Yeah, absolutely. Which I absolutely think he does. He's a civilian. You know, when you're in the military, you're trained and you're indoctrinated to kind of have a, not reckless disregard for your life, but you, you, you are programmed to accept that you may be injured mm. or even lose your life in the line of duty. And, and it's one of the first things in my very first ever contract that I signed on the day of enlistment. I was only, well, I don't like um, giving away markers that identify a lot, but I was a teenager and I signed it off. It was one of the last things um, in the contract and it said, I agree or I accept that I may die. Yeah. You know, so this is a civilian. He made no such oath. He signed no such contract. Yep. He's a taxi driver. And I'm not taking away from taxi drivers, but you wouldn't, you know. You don't sign. I accept that my life could be ended exactly. when you sign up to be a taxi driver. So his bravery is just so commendable. I just needed to. Can we show him? Yeah. He's, he's, Let's yeah, he's do on it. screen. Let's. What an amazing, brave man. And you can just tell. You know how you can read people's faces? It's just. You can tell he's such a lovely man. So kudos to David Perry. You're an amazing man. Your wife is a very lucky woman to have you. Such a selfless, brave human being. All right. I thought we'd start off with that. That's good. Because That's this, like a feel-good story. Exactly. In, yeah. a, in the otherwise not feel-good story that usually surrounds the, the Sussex duo. <laughs> but, you know, oh, and also an agenda. So again, you guys can have an, a feel for what we're going to talk about today. Um, we are going to talk about, Zach's going to have his Activision Blizzard segment, and there is so much. Oh, we've so got a big much. one. Um, after that, I think maybe to break the, the heaviness of that topic, we're going to look into the kind of cringe slash lighthearted funny thing that I want to share with you. And then we're going to delve into, um, <laughs> uh, this, this is a joke. I mean, Harry is... Apparently, one of the commissioners to fight against disinformation and misinformation. I, as soon as you said that he was in charge of something, I stopped at this point because I was like, I don't want to spit out my tea if it's that. It is that ridiculous, but I could have damaged a lot of expensive after, equipment. Yeah, and especially after the appeals revelations. Uh, we are then going to uh, discuss this joke of an article that I actually came across from Sarah Jessica Parker's Instagram. I used to follow her. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the article from a magazine called the cut or a publication called the cut. And it is a very pro Megan article surrounding the appeal. So stay tuned for that. We're going to briefly talk about Samantha Markle, her sister and what she had to say about these latest revelations and ending it off with the Ellen interview so um as much as i've tried to stay out of it even i know about like bits and pieces of the ellen interview so yeah i'm looking forward to that well we're not okay i, I won't give away much um before we do that i was just looking at my notes again and i forgot to i wanted to put this at the very beginning i want to give a shout out to liz now i'm not going to say the full name but we talk on instagram um you know who you are and I just, we just wanted to say hello and we hope you're doing great and you're very special. Um, you, the messages you send me almost bring me to tears. So much, much love to you and I hope this gives us, brings a smile to your face. So 
Should we get into the nastiness of Bob Bobby Kotick? <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Can we pull up his face? Because I always Go say that, oh, uh, I already... I, you know, he, he has that Elizabeth Holmes, Mark Zuckerberg eyes. Like, mm. he has that look, sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, give me a good big photo, people. Come on. It's like this dead, awful dead eyes. Jeez, look at him. Let's... Let me... Should I make it bigger? Go for it. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, yeah. he looks like he could be their father. He has this... There's something about the eyes. He's just evil. He and could be. A, he could have a. He could be a baby daddy for a lot of people, as we're about to get into. Yeah, let's start. So, ah, Activision Blizzard. All right. Pull up your notes. It's okay. Let's switch back to what we know. Let's do a quick revision. Activision Blizzard. Lots of allegations coming out of the company. Lots of harassment of the not so normal variety. Obviously, you have to be careful because Susan will crack down on us. And basically, Bobby Kotick came out and said, um, I wasn't aware of this. Zero tolerance. Yeah. You know, J. Allen Brack left uh, and replaced was replaced by two employees. <coughs> I'm sorry. I think I kind of choked. Replaced by two employees who <coughs> were made co-leaders, one of them a woman. So this was particularly that Activision Blizzard wasn't a very nice place to work for women and we can all guess why. Yeah. Right, so we've talked plenty about that. But let's talk about Bobby Kotick because the Wall Street Journal published an article on the 16th of November and it's blown everything out of the water. That's another commonality with Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos. Yeah. Because the Wall Street Journal is the, the publication that yeah. outed them. And Bobby Kotick knew this publication was gonna happen. He knew it was coming out. So before it happened- You're out of frame. Before it happened, he actually gave all of his employees like Thanksgiving, a week for Thanksgiving off to try knowing that this was coming. So he's already trying to sub, <laughs> here we go. Bobby Kotick not only knew about the harassment and the bullying and all of this happening at his company, he <coughs> was part of it and intervened. Intervened as in how? We're getting to that. <laughs> so. He withheld all of this from the board of directors. Back in 2000 and... You want to bring it here in the middle so you can see? Yeah, I will. I will. So that way I'm close to the camera. Yeah. I'll go right here. All right. Okay. So let's start with the big one. 2016, 2017, right? On two separate occasions, a female employee was... Can I spell it? Ard. Ard. s a d S aid, yeah, but like straight up, they R. use they use the R word, yeah, yeah, by a supervisor. Just no detail, because no detail. Yeah. Two separate occasions. Mm -hmm. This female employee reported this to HR, <coughs> and HR did nothing. Right? Yep. Imagine that. This is not Alex Afrasiabi related. This is. I'm not sure because it just says supervisor. Okay. So, so it could be him. Could have been him. Yeah. So the victim left and lawyered up. Then after the lawyers came after Activision, that's when they fired the supervisor, two months later, right? So the yeah. supervisor, if the victim hadn't lawyered up, the supervisor would have gotten away with R. Yep, yep. A spokeswoman said the victim couldn't remember correctly due to intoxication and that she didn't report it to HR. No, that's a lie, obviously. That's obviously a lie. Kodik not only knew of this, <clears throat> but hid it from the board of directors. Wow. <laughs> We're just getting started. He really is an Elizabeth Holmes. He really is. Another victim of this SA, the victim reported, supervisor was almost fired. So a different victim, this time S SA, this time the supervisor is almost fired. Wait, same supervisor? No. I, it just could be a different, okay. I think it's different. I think okay. it's, there's different, because there's yeah. different companies within Activision. Yeah, yeah. Right? Kotick not only intervened in the firing, but kept the supervisor on board and then gave counseling to the supervisor. Not to the victim. Not to the victim, to the supervisor. So support. Support to the, to the criminal. <coughs> yep. So let's talk about what Kotick did. In 2006, a former assistant for Kotick, Kotick threatened to kill her, have her killed in a voicemail. 
Yeah. That's the person we're dealing with here. He threatened to have his employee killed. Yeah. Right? And he's admitted to this as well and said, oh, he, you know, obviously feels bad for whatever, you know, the usual. The typical, The typical, like, I'm sorry I said that. You shouldn't be saying that as the head of a company. You shouldn't be saying that ever. Here we go. It doesn't matter if you're the head of a company or a freaking janitor. You don't say that. So, Kodik owned a private jet with someone else, right? I'm not sure who that other person is. But a flight attendant on that private jet was assaulted. You can okay, yeah, whatever. By the pilot. So the flight attendant reported that to one of the owners, the owner that wasn't Kodik. Mm-hmm. Kodik intervened and fired the flight attendant. Is this all verified? Yes, this is all in the article. Okay. Well, I, can't wait, wait, wait. Sh- I can't show the article. It's in the Wall Street Journal. It's, it's a behind a paywall. So yeah, I've yeah. I've gotten this through my usual sources. Yeah, yeah it's fair enough. But as long as, because, you know, I don't like putting out allegations without... Um, These aren't... This is all fact. based in the article. This is all fact? This is all based from the article. Okay. So, Ben Kilgore, who we've had his name come up before with the Afrasiabi stuff, uh, years of... SA and harassment and all of that sort of stuff. So when Kodik finally had to let him go, right? He let him go in the same way that, you know, companies diplomatically let people go. Yeah. There was like an email of praise. He's done so much for the company, all this sort of stuff. Probably gave him a stellar reference letter. All of that sort of stuff, right? So 30 female employees wrote an open letter in response detailing how they were SA'd, harassed by... Ben Kilgore, yeah. right? But that was buried. Of course it was. So let's let's come back to something more recent. Fran Townsend. Remember Fran Townsend making a public response against the lawsuit that happened this year, saying that there were baseless allegations yeah. and all this stuff. It was really tone deaf, essentially saying that we're, we're the good guys and everyone who's against us is lying. You know, that sort of thing, right? Typical of, of predators, by the way. Yeah, guess what? Fran didn't write that email. Bobby Kodik wrote that email, drafted, reviewed, and published under Fran's name, which then resulted in Fran, like, you know, in- entering this kind of uh, snowball effect where in the end she ended up deleting her Twitter account. Don't get me wrong. She's a horrible person. Mm. But Kodik threw her under the bus. Is it Kodik or Kodik? Uh, I've heard people say it both ways. So I'm, 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 I'm just <laughs> curious. Yeah. And then Kodik, Kodik wrote a letter saying that that letter by Fran was tone deaf. Oh my God. Right? Right? So let's come back to the co-leaders of Blizzard now, right? So Jalen Brack, because he let it happen. He he was let go, left, Mm. whatever the legal, you know, um, however the company sought to, he's gone. Two co-leaders, right? So the problem here is inequality right yeah you want equal pay for your female employees you want equal treatment they shouldn't be harassed yeah so jen o'neill is was the co-creator co-leader of blizzard along with another guy yeah this year yeah underpaid compared to her co-leader the very same year that lawsuits are coming out saying that there's harassment essay and inequality across the entire industry so she's quit after three months and only after she quit did they offer her equal pay. Because they knew she'd go out with because it. Because they were like... she'd like, you know, air it out. They wanted to keep her to be, oh, we don't want this getting out. Here's equal pay. Yeah. You should have had equal pay day one. She left anyway? She's left anyway. From, okay, from well, she it, has integrity. Uh-huh. So, three, now, this is where it gets really bad, right? Because you think that Bobby Kotick's done. You think that that's it. His career's over. Three hours after the article dropped, the board of directors said that they stand behind Bobby Kodik and his decisions. Not just him as a person, but they agree with everything he's done. So Again, they, it sounds like Theranos. This is crazy. They refused to do anything. So the immediate response, the very same day, was a walkout. Employees organized a walkout. If they were working from home, they stopped working. There was a walkout. I forget what the exact numbers were because obviously it was last minute, but they were in the hundreds, right? Mm. Then that was followed by a petition. 1,200 signatures last time I checked, signing for Bobby Kotick to resign. resign. 
This is it, and it's not an, an anonymous petition. The employees have their name on this petition because imagine going against your employer directly saying, I want you to resign, right? That's, that's a good way for you to get fired. That's how much this is built up where they've said he has to go and they're putting their names behind it. Yeah. There's also a change.org, I think, petition, but yeah. for the public, right? So 1,200 employees. And then Jim Ryan of PlayStation, right? Jim Ryan said Activision has not done enough. Is and he the CEO? Who is he? He's pretty much the head of the PlayStation division for okay. Sony. So when, yeah, he's pretty much, if something happens as far as... Yeah, it's just that you're saying his name and you're, uh, people, even, including yeah. myself, we don't know what his position is. Yeah, so so he, G- yeah. yeah Jim Ryan's pretty much the, the face and head of PlayStation. Yep, so um, he's, he said he's not... He said Activision has not done enough and the statements do not address the issues, right? That's yeah. a direct partner because... As recently as now, mm. you can walk down the street and see a Call of Duty Vanguard ad mm. with a PlayStation 4 logo in the bottom. Yeah, right? and Call of Duty is... One of the Activision properties, yeah. which is, by the way, just released. Yeah. Amongst all of this, they're still trying to release their half-baked, unfinished games. Yeah. Right? Then, Phil Spencer of Xbox. Phil's done a lot for the gaming industry this week, but... He said he is evaluating all aspects with with Xbox's relationship with Activision. So that's the two big players. Well, you've got four in the gaming industry. You've got PlayStation, Xbox, the PC markets all over the place, and Nintendo, mm-hmm. right? For the most part, Nintendo, you're not going to get anything but Mario on that. But PlayStation and Xbox, those are two huge chunks of your market. Yeah. If you look at the top 10 purchase games on PlayStation, Call of Duty is up there. Yep. Normally. Normally. I believe it. Yep. Along with Battlefield because they're yearly releases and they get people addicted and yep. hyped and loot boxes and all that, right? So for Jim Ryan and Phil Spencer on opposite sides, they obviously respect each other. It's yeah, not an actual but they're fight. rivals. It's, it's known. They're rivals and they've come together on this, right? No, not on a personal level as in Xbox and PlayStation yeah. are rivals, not Phil and yeah. um, Jim. So, then, on top of that, there's a charity called Girls Who Code, right? Mm -hmm. This charity, previously worked with Activision, has ceased all relationships with Activision. So, a charity has said, we don't want your business. Yeah, we don't want your money. We don't want your... Your your donations, yeah. Exactly. We don't want anything to do with you, right? So, the stocks have plummeted and some shareholders have also called for his resignation. The problem is that the shareholders, although it sounds like a lot, $4.6 million worth of shares. Oh, to, act, to Activision Blizzard, it's that's not. pennies, yeah. yeah. But it's still good that shareholders are doing something. Of course. But it's going to need a lot more. Should we, do you, should I uh, put the link for the change.org petition in, in the description box? Uh, yeah, I'll find that for you later on. Yeah, okay. definitely. Because maybe people want to, you know... Um, there is something else we lend can do, their voice to it. and I'm getting to that. So, this is where it gets even crazier. When we look at to what, when we look at why the board isn't firing Kodak, there's obviously Kodak has dirt on them. Kodak's best friends with them. All sorts of speculations. But here's something that's definitely part and parcel of the package. If Kodak gets terminated with cause, two hundred and sixty thousand. To sorry, two hundred sixty thousand dollar payout if he gets terminated without cause 265 million dollar payout he gets paid to get fired either way (sighs) now this is a billion dollar company right multi-billion dollar company so even if he gets terminated without cause which is probably the way he's gonna go because guess what a lot of these were settled out of court but Activision sees settlements as an excuse to delete the files because one of the statements that they've made is that there's no evidence. Now, of course there's evidence. There's so, there would be so much, but Activision has taken it upon themselves to delete the records once they've been settled. So, yeah. At this point, it's really shown just how powerful a corporation, a company can be and how powerless the people can be, how powerless even uh, the law, because... Oh, yeah, the law's a joke. But then the thing is that the law represents our government. So Our this, government's a joke. 
this is just it, right? I know this is an American thing, but if the government, thus the law, does not intervene here mm-hmm. and shut this down, mm-hmm. then it's really the biggest sign that we've seen recently of corporations own the world. Absolutely. The law discriminates. Mm-hmm. It only applies to plebs, That's you know, to it. everyday people who don't have money, who don't yeah. have power, who don't have stature. They are, you know, victims or I suppose they face the wrath of the law. As soon as you are an individual or a company in power, yep. the law does not exist. Lawrence from Inside Games and various other things in the industry, he said that basically if you know how much you settle for, you know how much it costs to get away with the crime. Or words to that effect. So you can just you can just pay your way out of anything. You can do anything. You know the cost. You have the money. Go for it. Yeah. By the way, my pants keep making this weird farting noise against the chair. I'm not farting. Just full disclosure. <laughs> um, right. Sorry. I just looked up Elizabeth Holmes' trial to see what's happening. But all I, the latest news, news is that she's testifying. The only reason I brought it up is because, you know, there, there, sometimes um, a story is so big mm. and the public outrage is so huge that a company or the founder of a company mm-hmm. can face the consequences of the law. Yeah. And Theranos is one of them because now Elizabeth Holmes herself is going through a criminal trial. Yeah. She is a defendant. So sometimes when mm. it's big enough, they'll do it. Yeah. So the good news here is that there is obviously the entire industry, as far as those who are morally on board with this, going, this isn't right. And, you know, the way I found out a bit about this was on my Twitter feed, which is normally just gaming stuff. Bam, straight there, everything. Jason Schreier, who works for Bloomberg, who I normally get, he's in in there. He's done a lot for crunch in in the industry. Um, he's hitting, hitting us up with facts all over the place. Uh, Crunch, for those of you who don't know, is this horrible, horrible practice in the gaming industry where you get, the closer you get to release date of a game, the more vile the work hours and the stress is on the employees. And so it's, also- it's crunch time. It's like they can't sleep. They can't eat. You just work, 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 work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And that, that could be another episode in itself. It's, it's only, not only ridiculous, it's the norm. Yeah. It's the main reason that I didn't even want to work in the gaming industry anymore. Yeah. Because when I, um, um, there was a point in my life when I was transitioning out of full-time army where I wanted to get into ga- the gaming industry. And after the ton of research I did, this crunch thing, I was like, ridiculous. yeah, no, at least it's worth it in the army because it's for yeah. a good cause. But yeah. for a game... No. I mean, I love games, don't get me wrong, but it's not life and death. No, it's not. And the thing is that uh, there have been... There was one studio that came out recently and said, we don't do crunch. People go home at five. We don't call them afterwards. They released an amazing game. It was like an indie title. Uh, But they had... had, I forget how many people were working there. But the whole story was, here's an incredible game that has acclaimed critical reviews. And no crunch. No crunch. Yeah. So it can be done. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I could r- probably write a thesis on why the gaming industry ends up in a place of crunch. And the the, the core principle would be people chasing trends. Oh, loot boxes. Yeah, yeah. And now the new thing is battle passes. And remember when you paid $20 for something and it was like a, a, something you could hold or it was like a game on special? These days you pay $20 for a freaking helmet inside the game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Of a different color. It's so <laughs> stupid. Anyway, I'm going to get too far into that. So yeah. I will say Activision's um, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard sales mm-hmm. have plummeted. Good. And I think that especially coming up to the Christmas period, guys, if you have to buy Call of Duty for any of your family members, buy it pre-owned. Pre-owned goes in, in Australia. If I buy pre-owned from EB Games, it the money just goes to EB Games. Right? Yeah, it, it won't go to the publisher. It doesn't or the go to the publisher, yeah. as far as I know, unless something's changed. Yeah. CEX also has a presence here. I think they they're primarily UK. Isn't it GameStop in the US or something? Uh, GameStop in the US. Yeah. Uh, JB Hi-Fi has a pre-owned section. Obviously, it's down the bottom with. That's like in a, Australia as well. It's a little uh, orange tag, and. The other thing is, people might not know this, but Activision Blizzard actually has one more company that's they're a part of. It's Activision Blizzard King. And you might not know King, but if I said Candy Crush, you might know that. So, they made the new Crash Bandicoot game 
on mobile. Uh, they've done Candy Crush, and if you punch in King into the App Store, then you can see that you know if you've got any of those games there. Yeah. I've just looked before. I thought about it as I'm sitting here, so I'll pull up a screenshot next episode. But basically, if there's something you want to do after signing the Change.org petition, getting rid of those King games off your phone, if you want to, I'm not telling you what to do,、mm. but that's something that metrics will show. People will actually see. Those metrics, and I'm not sure if those games have ads because I don't play mobile games. But if they have ads, that's cutting off revenue. Every time you、yeah. see an ad, that someone is paying for that ad to be shown, and so if you can't see the ads in a the game, they don't get paid. Yeah, it's important to know that、um, consumers have power. As much as the world would like us to believe that we don't, we do have power, and、um, you know, we our purchases. Is what makes these companies not only thrive but exist. So if you withdraw your, if you stop giving them your money, which they live on literally, you have power. You've contributed in some way. So it's just obviously, like Zach said, it all depends on how strongly you feel about this. You know, it's you're not any less of a good human being if you still want to play Candy Crush. It's no, of nothing not. like that.、So. Of course not.、Um, and the other thing I will say is that I, I practice what I preach. I've mentioned this before. I disagree with a lot of the stuff that Ubisoft has been doing recently. So when I wanted to buy Assassin's Creed, I bought pre-owned. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, may Bobby Kotick face、um, the consequences、uh, consequences of his actions? Will he? Probably not. I don't think so.、Probably、I think、not. that if I think that if he disappears from Activision, his name will be. Tarnished everywhere. Yeah, he doesn't care though. He's gonna get his nice payout, and, and he's gonna retire somewhere. Retire. I mean, he's old. Let's face it. The irony is that he could have retired years ago, based on the amount of money he gets. All right, we're gonna move on to a more <laughs> lighthearted cringe fest. Okay, so I didn't come across this all on my own. I will not take credit for this. I was watching the H three podcast.、Uh, This week for me, last week when you guys see this, but it was、uh, basically probably one of the cringiest rejections caught on camera. And what makes it worse? Oh God, I'm I'm actually already cringing because I've seen it.、Uh, my insides are going. <laughs>、yeah. What's actually worse is that it happened in school, so it's young kids. Oh, it's so bad when you're young because it feels like it's the end of the world, and that's all that matters. You know that you that your crush likes you back, or you know it's like the embarrassment feels like the world is over when、oh, you're yeah, when you're、absolutely. younger. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So okay, so、uh, there's this girl.、Uh, I don't know if we're gonna play the whole thing, but it's an old video.、Uh, this is girl in high school. It looks like, and she's walked into the. Oh, we can go full. We can show it off. Yeah, we, she's、uh, walked into the guidance counselor's office. Now it looks like the guidance counselor is the person who recorded this. Okay, so you would think that you know she's been called in because maybe maybe she's in trouble. Maybe she you know some some kind of counselor、um, counseling reason. Why isn't it playing now? Oh. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, go ahead and take a seat. Um. We were informed that there was a theft in、um, a locker room earlier today. A couple people have told me that you were there, or at least around it when it had happened.、Um, one of them is here,、um, so I wanted you to like see who they were, and they could explain a little bit more. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Come on in. Hello. Hi. You want to explain to Alyssa、uh, what you saw or what's going on? What I saw was you stole my heart, Allie.、Uh, Would you go to prom with me? Her face. I don't know. His face. Yeah. Would you consider it? Would you think about it? But yeah, if you'll think about it for him. Give him a yes or a no. Sometime soon. Oh, it's so bad. We can switch out. Okay. Oh man, it's actually worth seeing it now. Like because with H three they had their commentary on it, and now I actually got to watch the clean version of it. That is so much、uh, less worse than if he had asked her in the playground because she would have just like. 
she would have sent him Zach from H3. Yeah. Shared his story, and that's exactly what he did with an acoustic guitar solo to as the cherry on top. And he got rejected in front of 200 plus people, and he cried. I, I can't blame him. Anywho, I I feel like you know who I feel sorry for. It's gonna sound maybe it's gonna sound bad, but I feel sorry for the girl because. <sighs> You're put in this really awful situation where you've put, you have some kind of unspoken trust in the counselor mm. that they would never kind of put you in this situation. It's so far fetched and so just extreme that she, no one wouldn't have been caught off guard. And you can tell from her face that she was so uncomfortable. Yeah. The guy, as much as I feel bad for him, I feel like you did this to yourself, dude. You know? He's young. He's obviously again. This is an old video. God knows how old he is now, and I'm sure he's learned. But you, you, you have to go into this knowing it could go south. Yeah, this is something that I definitely <laughs> think that he didn't consider. Um, so did but, he? But th this is something I will say about her. She absolutely lacks the social skills to deal with authority because you can see that she's got that attitude when she walks in, like oh, the girl. Know, yeah, she's got this sort of like. Um, like I know she had a face. Yeah, she, she she had a face from as soon as she got in there. Like you're wasting my time. Exactly. So, and and the gum was putting me. I off. disagree. Okay, that's fine. You know it's, that's why it's interesting to have opposite sex like people yeah. on commenting on things because I didn't even notice that. Because so. I'm thinking an ideal situation is that she understands the scenario she's in. Right? She has some social awareness. She goes, okay, obviously this has been arranged. Obviously, I'm not going to say yes or no here because, and that's what she she's done. She had no idea it was being recorded. E no, exactly, exactly. But so she wasn't pulling a face for effect. No, she was I didn't. Genuinely think... happy. She genuinely felt that way. Yeah, yeah. I think considering what she was put through, she probably handled it well. But maybe I'm expecting a lot out of a child. You are. Mm. I think you're being so harsh on her. I really didn't see that coming out of you. Oh, She's I, just I, a little girl. I don't think a counselor should be setting that up either. Absolutely. If any criticism is going to be targeted here at anyone, it's the guidance counselor. Yeah. And why are you recording it? It's yeah. so bizarre. And I don't think that guys should be creating false... Like, essentially what he's done is say, I don't have the guts to ask her out myself. Yeah. So I'm going to ask this adult that she has some trust yeah, in. I'm going to set this up. So, because the next time she goes to the guidance counselor, she's going to be like, Egg. exactly. Am I going to, so I think, yeah, I think she didn't know how to deal with the situation. Of course. Cause no one would. Yeah. Would you? No, but that's <laughs> the thing. As a kid, you don't know these things. Even so. as an adult, you walk into your, say your psychologist's office and then this random person who has a crush on you, your neighbor walks in and goes, hi, I arranged this. Mm. And it's like, I feel like it's so unfair because he really put her in a difficult situation where I feel like maybe his intention was not necessarily to frame her, you know, put her back against the wall, but I feel like he didn't want to give her a chance to say no. And yeah. so he framed it in the most difficult situation to just say no. Mm. I don't know. I think I have seen no fault on the girl. Like I said, she had no idea it was being recorded. She mm. wasn't putting up an act. That was just her face. I guess I just didn't like the fact that she had attitude the second she, she walked in. She didn't have attitude. She must have been like really like, I don't know what I did. You know, you, when you maybe when you're called into the guidance counselor's office, it's usually because you're in trouble. You know what it is? When they zoomed in on her face, I've seen girls pull that face before oh when God, they're you're... actually... No, but listen, listen, this is the thing, right? This is my kind of survival instinct from school kicking in. I've seen them pull that sort of like like smile but look to the side like when they're guilty when they're actually like they're pretending they don't know something okay so you're projecting well yeah i guess i'm just looking at that face and going i know girls who would pull that yeah. face i don't know if you guys know um 99 of the content we share with you i don't share with zach because i i like getting his um initial real reactions i can't even use the word organic anymore thank you megan um <laughs> so i didn't see this coming and i'm like how did you twist this and just go straight at the girl it's crazy is that your high school, like, kind of... I think I'm just allergic to high school drama. Anyways, fair <laughs> enough. But, um, anyways, yeah, very interesting take, Zach. Um, and, and this is something I've wanted to do for a while. I've had it listed on one of the earlier podcasts um, as a segment. And I never got around to doing it because we kept getting topics 
from the news. But um, now that we've come across this and H3, I'm not gonna, again, I wasn't, I'm not really, I'm not copying them. That's why I'm saying I've had this idea before, but they, watching their episode encouraged me to just go ahead and do it too, which is sharing cringe or any sort of, like, I guess, rejections that stand out to you and mm -hmm. whether you were rejected or you did the rejecting. Yeah. So who, you, who wants to go first? You go first. Okay, full disclosure. And this is not because I've never been rejected. I haven't been rejected because I was the type of girl who would, if I had a crush on a guy, which is really rare, most of my crushes growing up were celebrity crushes. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest. And I remember joking with my mom once going, all the boys in my school must be ugly because I just, I've literally never had a crush on anyone in school the whole time. Um, so... I've legitimately never been rejected because I never had, I suppose, it's not even the guts. I never wanted to take it a step further. Yeah. You know, um, I always thought I was asexual, by the way, my whole life, uh, because Zach is actually my first everything. You know, I've never dated before Zach, nothing casual, nothing serious, um, no, not even been kissed, like nothing, because I had no interest in it. So... Um, I was happy to live in the fantasy of a crush. Yeah. And I never wanted to see it realized. Yeah. So I've never been rejected because I never took that step that many people are brave enough to take. Um, but uh, one, one cringe rejection that I've made stands out to me. And I say it's cringe. And I didn't know it was cringe at the time. But after it happened, after the fact, everyone was like, whoa, <laughs> you are vicious. And I didn't even know. It was in the army. We were all in the common room, which is like kind of a kitchenette. And then there was like a seating area in the middle, TV on the wall. We hung out there. And one guy um, who actually ended up being my best friend um, during, during our time in the army. We're the same age. He's still my friend. And um, I didn't... Much like a boy, sometimes I can, it really can fly over my head if yeah. someone likes me. I don't, I don't get it. Especially if I like them as a friend. So he made the mistake of doing this in the common room, mm. which I guess like very, very much like this boy that we just watched. He, maybe he thought that if I say it out loud in front of many people, uh, Pluto won't say no. Yeah. So I'm sitting there watching um, this ninja, t uh, you know those obstacle course, what's it called? Ninja something, ninja hero, something in Australia. Anyways. It's those really cool, funny obstacle courses that are really difficult to get through. And there's like an audience in a live studio. So I was like watching. And then he goes, hey, uh, Pluto, uh, do you want to go see a movie with me sometime? And then I said, what, you mean like just the two of us? And then he said, yeah. And then I was like, no. But that was it. That was it. And then he just kept quiet. And I was so non unfazed, nonplussed by what I said that I didn't even think to look at how he reacted. I just kept watching the show, so oblivious. And then a few minutes later he left and then everyone was like, whoa, you just shut him down. Oh my God, the poor guy. Remind me to never ask you out on a date. And then I was like, was he asking me out on a date? And they're like, yeah, what do you think? And I was like, oh my God, I had no idea. But then I went to him. Um, we had this policy of not shutting our, uh, our it's a bedroom, but it's also your room in the army. We had a policy of not share, shutting our room door. So I walked, I knocked on the door, walked into it because we're friends. And I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. Were you, were you asking me out on a date? And then he was like, yeah, kind of. And then I was like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. And then I went on to say, you know, I just see you as a friend and I really like you. And I hope that this doesn't end our friendship because mm -hmm. I, you know, and he was one of those amazing rare men, young men who put his feelings aside just to continue the friendship with me. Yeah. And that's how we ended up being best friends. He actually moved on from me. I could tell it was genuine. He was, you know, interested in other women, but he maintained the friendship with me and we were best friends. So that it was cringe because I cared about him so much yeah. that I, I was like, I can't believe I did that. Even now yeah. when I think about it, I'm like, <sighs> yeah, I would say uh, that it's a rare thing for anyone to put their feelings aside because when I've rejected people in the past, they have gone, sure, we'll just be friends and then completely ignored that mm. and then persisted to 
think that, oh, well, he'll eventually be interested in me. So it happens with guys and girls. Of course. And, and that's why I think it's very important that you also share, um, you know, apart from you being rejected, if that ever happened, then yeah. who would reject you? <laughs> <laughs> um, share what it's like as a man to reject a girl. Yeah. Because you're right. There is this uh, misconception that a woman will never be rejected. Men are always flattered and, they're, and they love it and they'll always say yes. Yeah. Assuming they're single, of course. Yeah. But um, do you want to start off with your... you want to start off with being rejected or do you want to get into being the rejector? Well, the thing is that, I mean, how do I say this without sounding like I've got a big head? I've had, you know, people approach me before and with the intent of being in a relationship. And what's really cringe is trying to let someone down without hurting their feelings. Yeah. Because I've tried doing that, right? Sometimes you just know when someone's not a fit for you. You just know that that's going to be the case. Yeah. It be you like even beyond whether they're physically attractive or not, or not. You just know that this personality isn't the sort of thing you're looking for. Yeah. And that's absolutely fine. But how do you tell that to someone? So I've had one situation like ten years ago now, where I had a girl that was interested in me, and I spent hours telling her that it wasn't her it was me this whole conversation about not interested in relationships i'm just not interested in her right but, but you're coming you... up with a way to I'm... not direct it at her yeah i'm trying anyway so that's super cringe because she's totally like you know thinking that oh well one day when he's ready for relationships i'll be there it's like no anyway that was that's a cringe situation i don't remember a lot of the details but man i have had it's just like this constant bombardment where it's like a woman. So she'll, for some reason, she just keeps coming at you. Like I've had that with multiple women where they've gone, okay, you don't like me now. We'll try again tomorrow. Men do that too. Yeah. That's why yeah. I valued my friendship with this particular man mm. because he didn't do that. Because I have had to very ruthlessly ice men out of my life yeah. who used to be my friends. This is all in the army, by the way. Yeah. Um, when I was in university, I was very young and my cohort was a lot older, like 25 plus in law school. So I wasn't getting, um, I wasn't being asked out, thank God. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, if you're that I was young. a minor, yeah, yeah. for uh, a majority of my degree. So, but yeah. In the army, I've, I've had to cut out friendships yeah. because he they wouldn't stop. Absolutely. I've, I've had to do that as well. Where, I mean, you know, most famously, there was the uh, the one who essayed me. And that all came from the fact that I constantly rejected them. But this time, because I had had the experience of trying to be nice about it, I wasn't nice about it. Anymore. Anymore. You started off being nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, after the first time, I'm like, hold on a second. When you, when I say I'm not interested and that person then persists, at that point, they're not respecting your feelings. They're mm -hmm. not respecting how you feel. And then it becomes an obsession yeah. rather than an actual interest. Yeah. Like, like they own you. Exactly. Like they're entitled exactly. to you. Exactly. Yeah. So towards like, as, as time goes on, I became more aggressive with like, no. Like how many times can you say no to a person? Yeah. Um, yeah. And this one was like, no one, every realm possible, like not physically attracted, nothing I value in your personality, just totally nothing to do with me as a person. And yeah, then that's, that's how it ended up was SA, you yeah. know, in the end, because I mean, it's, it's hard because I'm like trying to find the cringe in it, but th that was shameless. The approach there, it was like, they didn't care what I was saying. Yeah. They only cared that they tried whatever they tried. Well, that links us to why my uh, our Instagram's gone private again. Because um, for those of you who've been watching us for a while, around July, uh, up until July, my Instagram was private because of this same perpetrator not leaving me alone, um, threatening me uh, via email. So... I eventually found the guts, not found the guts, I called the police, I went to the police, went to the police, presented them with, oh man, a mountain of stalking evidence, and they intervened, and they told them, you are stalking this person and harassing them, and these are the accounts that you're using to do so, the person confessed, and then, I don't know if it was because we also happened to be in lockdown that uh, things 
backed off a little bit and I was able to have a public Instagram. But now, especially since uh, Australia has been opening up again and friends have been coming over and you know, they can use other people's accounts, which they have. Um, now I am feeling uh, threatened and uh, scared once again because this person, uh, even though we dragged them through the court system and had a restraining order, they still won't leave us yeah. alone. And I've said this in the podcast before as well. And um, I like to think that I'm a very brave individual, but you know, I can't go out. We both, I can't just speak for myself. We both can't go out without really, really trying to be careful about where we go and the likelihood of bumping into this person yeah. because I am legitimately afraid for my life. It's one of those situations that it doesn't seem like a big deal until, until, you you've, until you've experienced it. And so yeah. that's why people who have experienced it will understand having someone who is constantly barraging you, constantly invading your space. And even when you put up barriers as far as law enforcement, yeah. even when you go that far, they will still try and come at you because they are incapable of separating that obsession. They are incapable of dropping it. They yeah. just go, I want this and I will have it by any means necessary, no matter who they hurt, no matter who they use, no matter how many people they leave on the floor to step on, they will do everything in their power. And it's terrifying. It's terrifying. And um, that's why, you know, if you notice that we bring them up in the podcasts, it's because they're stalking me or us. So my way, it's kind of like how the more Megan acts up, the more we call it out, right? Yeah. So the more the stalking ramps up, the more I talk about it in the podcast. And I'm actually glad that I brought up the story from over 10 years ago, because that wasn't the, that, you know, there were a few... Different person. Yeah, because I changed schools um, towards the end of my education. So like I was, I guess, fresh meat yeah. to some of those girls at my new school, yeah. right? And nothing against them. It's just that I was the new shiny, you know? I yeah. went, <laughs> gosh, if you saw my hair cut at formal. I, I saw was, it. It was... <laughs> It was so bad. So bad. But anyway, <laughs> they saw something in me. They were interested in me. Um, but, you know, I'd gone the long way about saying I wasn't interested. Um, and even though it's not a very effective way, right, those people still respected me enough that if I saw them today, it wouldn't be an issue having a conversation with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's That's, like, yeah. yeah. But to end this segment on a high note, I, there is one rejection story that i really had to like think about and remember just so to balance the the scales of it's really it's not a straightforward rejection because it, it was it, i'll just tell you it's 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 a weird one but i'll tell you i i think i was 13 years old and one of my school friends had a crush on a supermarket cashier now he was a, a kid he was a minor uh cashier or at least he i, I don't know i was 13 he looked like he was maybe 16 17 so there's nothing illegal there but anyways it never went anywhere spoiler because <laughs> my friend was too nervous to ask him out we were kids we had no concept of you do not catch someone in their work shift yeah, right. working the counter mm. and ask them if they want to go on a date with you that is so inappropriate so we uh, a whole group of us went to the supermarket it was in a shopping center and we were like just trying to convince her to just hand him her number on a piece of paper and her and i don't know if she put her name down i think it was just the number and she wouldn't do it she just she was too terrified and then we all were like kind of trying to decide who was going to do it for her and at the end of the day i went fine i'll do it so i went and i didn't buy anything i just stood in line and then as i passed him by in the cashier i just i, get, I handed him the note not really caring if he thought it was me because i just wanted my friend to get the call okay he never called <laughs> he never called and of course the joke in my group of friends became you're too ugly and that's why he oh, never man. called yeah he never called so oh. there yeah so that was like a rejection because he thought it was me yeah so i guess i got indirectly rejected i just feel bad for my friend because yeah. like i ruined something that could have been potentially beautiful <laughs> that being said the same way that we we chastised that guy for getting the counselor on his side yeah she should have had the guts if he was that yeah. important she should have had the guts i so. know and like i said you don't catch someone in their work shift and no. ask them out that is just so wrong 
Do you have a story of you being rejected? Yes. So there was a girl that I was interested in. Uh, oh gosh, I forget exactly what year it was, but anyway, she. I, I never really asked her out because it's like. She was probably the sort that would have gone, ew, no, like oh. very, very. <laughs> like <yeah>. that girl. <laughs> Oh, I see where the trauma is coming from. No, not from. quite. Not quite. <laughs> okay. Not quite. Did we she were, have that look on her face? We were younger. This, um, uh. No, I didn't think she was one of... No, she wasn't. She wasn't like that, I promise. But anyway, so I was kind of like hinting that I liked her, you know, in my... What I thought was subtle way, but probably not subtle because I'm a guy. <laughs> and it was just like... And I was socially awkward in school. Um, but... Anyway, one time, because the church was attached, there was a school and a church attached. So anyway, we're at the, on the, on the church side, the band's rehearsing and everything. And uh, we're chasing, I'm chasing her around. And I think we're having a grand old time, right? Wait, when you mean chasing her, as in gay, uh, playing? Playing. Okay. Because yeah. like, look, we were just past single digits, like maybe 10. 11, okay, 10, 11. Maybe okay, 10. Yeah. So you're right? playing. So we're playing around. Anyway. I, I don't know what I did to piss her off, right? Mm. But she just turns around and almost, because the band's playing, at the top of her lungs, just goes, I don't like you! She like, must have been, as a girl, someone I can, I mean, I feel, I feel like I can shed some light. I wasn't there, but I think someone told her mm. that, you know, that, that guy likes you. Oh, maybe, yeah. And then she, especially, I mean, I'm sure a lot of women out there can uh, agree that when you're a little girl... 10, 11, you really, I mean, for the most part, unless you have a crush on someone, but you're just not there. You're oh, just like, yeah. ew, no, why no, do you like me? No one had any business dating at that age. <laughs> yeah. It's just so, that you don't, like when you grow up, and this is another thing with media, right? As a kid, you grow up and you see that there's always a love story. Mm. Aladdin has Jasmine. Yeah. You know, Ariel has there, They force it on you. It's like, there's a lot. So, you know, growing up, I'm like, well... You know, am I going to meet a, not a, prin I never used the word princess, but that's always ingrained in your head that you're going to meet someone one day. Not my head. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> all of us are as strong I'm as not, you. I'm not strong. I'm, I'm messed up in my own way. Hey, you found someone in the end. Not, yeah. Just completely, um, unplanned, did not want to, was not looking for love. So yeah, just putting it out there. I guess yeah. that's when it comes to you, huh? Yeah. I think that. You know, I mean, having said that, you were looking for it. Yeah, being prepared for something. And anyway, let me tell the end of the story yeah, yeah, before yeah. I go into that. So anyway, she yells us out and I don't know how many people would have heard. Yeah. But anyway, it was just like, whoosh, in my oh. face. And then I turned around and then she did the typical like, I was only joking as I'm oh, walking away. Oh, because your face must have been so broken. Because I thought we were having fun. So I had this big grin on my face. Like, I'm like, yeah, we're having fun. We're chasing. Cool. Yeah, this is. And then... Yeah, which, you know, that was, I think, my first... Um, and I saw photos of you of that age. So <laughs> cute. Aww. That was probably my first... Uh, rejection. No, definitely not my first rejection. God. Damn, at 10 years old, you're a seasoned rejectee? No, no, but definitely not my first. I think I was interested <laughs> in another girl before that. But that was Who a, rejected you? Well, that was a complicated thing. She, okay. was, she would play with... Uh, she played me against another guy. Where, like... Like not even double digits and she's playing me against another guy wow that girl's got mad skills uh, yeah but that's the thing right she would then she she that's what was the entertainment was for her being like he thought that she wanted me and i thought that she wanted him wow yeah that's crazy anywho um but yeah uh that was the first time i realized that people say i was only joking when they realized they screwed up yeah. You know? Like, all right, Aww. fair enough if you don't like me, but it was pretty cruel. Cool, that, they're really cruel. Cool. But, but, you know, she was she was a kid. I was going to... Number one, yes, she was a child. Number two, she did apologize, kind of. I was only joking. She felt bad. Yeah, well, that... Like, I was already gone by that. Oh, that's, like, so heartbreaking. <laughs> I've, I've heard this one before, but it's just... Oh, it's really sad. It's okay. Things happen for a reason, right? Oh, yeah. Is, don't regret... Like, looking back, I'm like, I was a stupid kid. Oh, come on. You were a kid. <laughs> Um, all right, should we uh, move on to the Duke of uh, Dis and Misinformation? This is seriously a joke, by the way, guys. I'm not even kidding. Uh, so there's this Commission on Information Disorder final report released on the 15th of November. Um, can we just switch? I can show it off. 
I'm also gonna be reading it, so we'll just leave it up. I'm not reading the whole thing. Don't get me wrong. It uh, is. Let, let me move us over here. It is just pages and pages and pages of um, information. So I will link this in the description box if you actually want to read it. But it starts off with well, so it's number one. It specifies America. Okay, so nothing to do with the UK. America is in a crisis of trust and truth. Bad information has become as prevalent, persuasive, and persistent as good information, creating a chain reaction of harm. It makes any health crisis more deadly. It slows down response time on climate change. It undermines democracy. How did they get to climate change in that? Uh, anyway, go Mis on. Misinformation. Okay. Now, don't forget, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Harry is one of these commissioners. The Aspen Institute's Commission on Information Disorder was created to address these conditions. I don't have to go listing through, but basically, the commission is composed of a diverse group from across the political spectrum, wow, wow. representing academia, government, philanthropy, and civil society. So, you know, I'm guessing Harry's, you know, the, the main umbrella is political spectrum, representing academia, da 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 da. So Harry can't get out of at this point acknowledging that he too has gone political yep. by officially involving himself in this. And I will show you his photo in the group photo so no one can go, well, how do you have proof that Harry is a commissioner? Now, the joke is, especially after the revelations, let's go to the photo, the revelations of the appeal. So there's Harry right there. Um, the commissioners. So, like I said, I had a quick skim. It was way. It's look as you can see, it's like seventy five pages. Um, the the main the main. I haven't read it in much detail, but from what I can gather, the the message is again. It's one of those things where we say Meghan and Harry kind of conceal their agenda in a legitimate message, right? Yeah. You know, misinformation is never good. Um, we need to find the truth. In fact, that's what we call for on this channel. That's what many people who out the, the couple call for. It's truth. So the fact that this man, after the Oprah interview, after all the lies that have been debunked on that interview, and now, officially in a court of law, whether they actually lied or didn't remember, that these two are the Duke and Duchess of this misinformation. I mean, we call them of hypocrisy, right? Deacon Duchess of Hypocrisy. That's... Now they have a new title. I mean, I guess they always had it. But now that Harry's officially a commissioner of this initiative, hmm. it just doesn't get more hypocritical, nonsensical, and laughable, really. It's so stupid. And it makes me immediately discredit anything that has this behind it. The like, I'm, I'm almost concerned that... Regardless of how smart or how uh, morally correct anyone else in that photo is, they already have sub-credit in my credibility books because I'm just thinking to myself, but Harry's there. Exactly. And I don't know. I mean, these things take time. You know, it was published on the 15th. So obviously, but when he was accepted as a commissioner or commissioned for this project, the appeal revelations haven't come out. I really would love to be a fly on the wall and figure out what, you know, the head honchos of this initiative, which includes Katie Couric, what they think now. Are they blind to the appeal revelations? Do they even care? Do they know? And they went, huh, that, this is a bad look for us being associated with, yep. you know, a potential liar. Because let's not forget, Harry was also directly involved in feeding information. In fact, he was like, oh... Uh, Jason, can you please tell them this, 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 and this about her? And yeah. also, if you don't want to tell them, can I? Like, he was so gung-ho about feeding them information, Omid Scobie and Carol uh, Durand. Man. So, yeah. this is insanity. You know what this reminds me of? When Tony Abbott, who's now two prime ministers ago in Australia, right? He got elected, and his... One of the f roles that had to be fulfilled was... Um, something with women. Minister for Women or something like yeah. that. He filled it himself. Yes. Called himself the Minister of Women. He was very much an old-fashioned... Could have pulled him straight out of the 50s. Yep. And he would have fit right in. Th those were his political agendas. Yeah. 
And so when it came to respecting women and giving them equality, he was not on board with that. Yep. And so he made himself the minister for women. It was it was a joke. I remember, I, I believe I was a child when that happened, but it was a joke. It was a joke. And this is a joke. It's just like, I'm going to spread as many lies as I possibly can to inflate the ego of my already big-headed wife. And then I'm going to turn around and say that I care about misinformation and i'm a commissioner of 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 such an initiative to fight against it to hold the spreaders of misinformation accountable i read that when i was skimming through well they hold your wife accountable exactly, you idiots exactly what world do we live in you know i was telling zach i was like is this things really are topsy-turvy this is literally like we're in underland or wonderland if it's official tim burton version is underland that's where we are. Things are like topsy turvy, and except there's an end to that movie, and I can walk out of the theater. There is no end to this. They just keep going and going and going. Well, I suppose you know many people um, have a very legitimate comment when it comes to these two, which is we need to stop talking about them if you don't want to give them attention. In a perfect world, that would, work. That would happen. If we and other channels stopped talking, and not even like YouTube channels, you know, there are British um, uh, news outlets and all that that openly talk out against their hypocrisy. If we stopped, then the only noise would be the pro, the pro Sussex messages, the pro Sussex, the People magazines of the world, the Harper's Bazaars, the Vogue's. So the people that they want to silence are the people who are actually against misinformation because that's why we're here that's why anyone talks against megan i'm sure there are people out there who just genuinely hate her guts for no reason whatsoever other than the fact that they just don't like her but for the most part the things i've seen the channels that you've watched and the people that i've seen talk about her have talked about her actions first and foremost and how they are against the very things that make a good person exactly but yeah i mean I, I see this comment a lot not just in our channel but in other channels it's like we'll just stop talking about them and they'll go away Doesn't but work. that's not how it's gonna work the, the 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 lies and the praise will just be the only noise out there and all the opposition you're telling us to stop talking about them but then the opposition will die out see and and you know the only the biggest this is what lady c said at the end of one of her recent episodes exposure 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 you have to expose the lies yes. on a public platform yep. if you can because that is the only way that these people can be i, I don't want to say defeated but their lies can be distinguished um, extinguished word of mouth is also very powerful once you know once you get down to that for example if someone that i knew said oh wow megan's so nice i wouldn't shy away from telling them actually have you seen the facts you know and yeah. then this is a guy what business do i have talking about the duchess of hypocrisy but well you can thank me for that i Dra feel dragging you onto this but podcast. i feel so strongly against who she is trying to appear as yeah because she is a liar she is a hypocrite she is her own kryptonite she pretends to stand for one thing and then does the complete opposite and expects us all to buy it yeah and that's that's just not right it's just and then the people uh siding with her which leads brilliantly into this article if we can switch this is the article i mentioned earlier when i that i found maybe move the pip the other way yeah that i found uh because jessica sarah jessica parker um posted on instagram simply with the caption this and then I was like, what? What's this? And she's like, oh, you guys need to read this article pretty much. <sighs> the Cut. Issued on the 12th of November. This, is, this article is in direct response to the appeal revelations. So, bear this in mind. This is defending what Megan has done. Defending the misremembering. Defending the potential perjury. The fight of Meghan Markle's life. The Duchess's battle with tabloids and trolls is about more than just her right to privacy. Now, what's interesting is the author, Safia or Safia Umoja Noble. If you scroll down to the end of the article, um, where is it? A partner to the Archwell Foundation. Why don't you get an unbiased third party so that you can have an ounce of credibility to whatever is being said in this article and in many other articles. It's either her friends, 
her anonymous friends yeah. talking to People Magazine, feeding them yeah. information. Again, a biased party. Yeah. Or someone would do a partner is a partner to the Archwell Foundation. But let's disclose get... your. Well, she did affiliates she at did. the beginning. At the very beginning, because people only ever read the first paragraph of an article most times. That's what I do when I'm looking for information. That's what they're hoping for. No one really reads that little... The, the italics, as soon as you get to the end, yeah. and it's an italic section, yeah. you know it's just, oh, blurb about the author, which people generally don't read. It's ridiculously dirty. And I've seen scientists who go... who do, The second slide on a presentation when they present finding is these are my affiliations this is who i'm funded by this is a potential conflict yeah. of interest yeah. that i could have because when you were trying to actually have a conversation which is two ways then at that point you go well this is my potential bias you yeah. try and identify that bias yeah. this is completely different not only are they trying to silence the truth not only are they trying to subjugate their own truth over the top and lie to everyone not only do they think we're all stupid and we're just going to eat it up because the internet is in freedom of information in its greatest form but then they're all trading money behind the scenes yeah. it's wow I, I also want to point out and i think this is important okay that the author is a woman of color um i believe i mean I believe she's a black woman because this whole article, why I'm saying it's important is because everything here is about people are targeting Megan because she's black. Bullshit. Need I remind people that this woman for her entire life pretty much identified as either ca Caucasian or at most biracial. She never said that I I'm a black woman. This woman is the very definition the of she will identify as whatever serves her agenda. Absolutely. And um, she's even been cast in roles. I'm not talking about Rachel Zane. I'm talking about the cringe Hallmark movie she made where her parents are both white. That's how much of a Caucasian this woman is. And I, th I believe her, her own mother isn't even... I think her mom is half, only half black. I mean, her dad. Her dad, <laughs> full stop. Right there. Her dad's there. Her she sisters are there. As I... Look, I'm not saying that someone of a slightly darker shade can't receive persecution, right? But I do. Exactly. That happens. But do you then say, don't give me criticism yeah, because, because of the shade of my exactly. skin? Exactly. Because if that was the, the case, then all of the, the Sussex squad, you can't give me criticism. Yeah. Because I am a woman who is not typically white. Exactly. So if we're, and especially when the criticism about Rachel is never about her color. Exactly. Ever. If you attack someone for their color, then absolutely you deserve to be slapped in the face. It but is. if you attack someone, not even if you are trying to have a conversation with someone about why they're a liar and why every time they open their mouth, they are actually causing people to lose brain cells because that's how stupid the things they are saying. Yeah. And then someone goes, no, you have to let them because they have a slightly darker shade. Yes. That's the complete reverse of what we need. Equality, where no one is seen above anyone else. Exactly. And, you know, their favorite, it comes up here as well, their favorite reasoning is you're just jealous and you're racist. I am well, not I'm, jealous. I'm going to say the same to her haters. If you attack, you know, they do like to... Uh, the, uh, these things only come up if you're attacking a woman, really. Yeah. So if you're attacking me as a woman, you're just jealous and you're racist because I'm not blonde and blue-eyed. That's it. You see how it feels? Mm. Imagine, imagine you have legitimate criticism and you disagree with what someone's saying and I come back to you and say, you're just jealous that you don't look like me and you're racist. It's the most stupid thing. It's the laziest thing. On top of that, Rachel should be jealous of you because you still have your dignity. Let's not go there. But no dignity. One, anyone who has dignity is above Rachel. Full no, stop. No one should be jealous of anyone in, in an ideal world. Exactly. I don't believe in jealousy. But here it says, um, the first thing they reference, as you can see, is the bot Sentinel report, which we have thoroughly debunked on this very podcast as... These are all genuine accounts. They even had screenshots of legitimate criticism. Some of it was targeting her looks, which I don't agree with. Yeah. But the rest of it that we went through together was legitimate criticism of her lies and her behavior. And that this report 
bunched it in as this is trolling and hate. So we're gonna use disproven reports. You know what? We might as well say smoking is good for you and pull up a report from back yeah, to the 30s. The 50s or whatever. Where someone actually, where the doctors recommend this smoking, brand of yeah. cigarettes. Yeah. We might as well because once again, spreading misinformation, especially on something disproven. It's like rocking up again to a scientific conference and going, hey, here are my findings on a report that we disproved. Yeah. And, and it, 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 this was disproved within days. Twitter. Twitter came out and said they're all legitimate accounts these are not bot accounts there is not there there is no coordinated attack and this is exactly what amber heard alleged in her defense or her counterclaim rather and it was shut down by the court because there was like no basis for these allegations the same thing and this is the first thing you're quoting shame on you sophia you know look up the facts educate yourself before you quote a useless report. I'm going to take a one step ahead and say, Sarah Jessica Parker, maybe double check the facts of your article before you tweet it. Especially being in a position of power oh. where people actually, well, I would say that they used to respect what you say because I don't respect anything you say right now if you're willing to spread this. Uh, the entire Hollywood situation is woke and pro Megan. You can literally pay people to do the research for you if you are a celebrity and you choose not to. And then here it says... The company CEO of, of Bot Sentinel told BuzzFeed News. Really? BuzzFeed News? That's, well that, that's your authoritative um, oh. source? That this anti Megan Twitter campaign is unlike anything he and his team has ever seen before. Where have I heard that before? Not necessarily from, you know, this, this guy Christopher Boozy. Amber Heard said the same thing. Unprecedented hate targeted at me. Johnny is coordinating bots from okay. Russia. Okay, but I don't think I would have to go very far to find BuzzFeed spitting a hate article about someone else. So it's okay if BuzzFeed does it, but it's not okay if the people rise up against misinformation and hypocrisy. He actually, look, I literally didn't know. He actually compared, he, like, he said there's no motive. Fuck off. And he compared it to the hate that Amber Heard got. Wow. So you think, you think it's okay for men to be Physically, can I say the word physically and assaulted in yes. the same sentence? You think it's okay for men to be physically assaulted because you either did your research and said, no, I'm going to pick the side of a woman because she's a woman, or you didn't do your research and shouldn't be writing articles. This man is disgusting. He literally compared, he's trying to insinuate from what I can see that the hate, the hate that Amber Heard got and the campaigns to get her removed from Aqu Aquaman was unwarranted because you're saying the hate directed at Megan is unwarranted so clearly you're comparing the two as being in the same situation or at least comparable and then he goes are these people who hate her is it racism are they trying to hurt Harry and Megan's credibility your guess is good as ours we don't have to try to hurt their credibility they have done a stellar job doing that to themselves all on their own sorry what's this guy's name again Christopher Boozy so Christopher Boozy writes, <clears throat> if anyone sitting in this room or watching this podcast or not watching this podcast knows how to use Google, you are thus more qualified for Christopher Boozy's role in BuzzFeed than Christopher Boozy himself because you don't have to go very far down Google Duck, duck, go. I don't even care if you use Bing at this point. Mm. There are search engines for a reason, and the most basic of research would show that Amber is a liar. And, if Has you, and as soon as you see that, you should go, wait, there's more to discover. Exactly. Um, now, she, we're, gonna, we're not going to go through this whole article because uh, the beginning of it or is about Megan and the rest goes into the history of black women being targeted which, which again, is all valid yes don't lump megan in there exactly she's not one of these victims what you've just done is discredit the all the movement. struggles all the movement everything else that black women have gone through by throwing her into it this coordinated and likely well-funded campaign against Megan is but one of many examples of the long-standing tradition of taking down black women for sport Show me your tax files, buddy. Show me your tax. No, no, this is this is this is Sophia. Sophia talking now. It, 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 show me, show me the tax. Show me the funds. Show me all your accounts. Show me that you weren't paid for this article. It's like when someone says they accuse someone else of something that they've done. There's no way that this isn't lined with the Archwell money. 
And then it goes, it's for that reason, well, for Megan, whose legal case against the Mail on Sunday continues this week, winning in court is important not only symbolically, but practically, as it could expand protections for the rest of us. It's for that reason we should all brace ourselves for further attacks against not only her character, but her very existence. This was released after the appeal revelations. After the truth came out of Megan forgetting that she 100% cooperated and collaborated with the authors of Finding Freedom, in which she claimed initially that she had nothing to do with it. This is what makes this article sick. If it came out after her initial victory earlier this year, yep. which I was a proponent of, and We've I have got a video. Two videos about it. Two videos saying, yes, justice has been served. Meghan Markle is in the right here. If this was when that was published, I would completely excuse this woman. So let's just let's just clarify this. Sophia and the publisher at the cut think it's okay to lie against direct evidence if it gets you out of trouble. And and you're suing a publication, not even just lying in a statement. She, Megan initiated this lawsuit. Did we say that Sophia is a woman of color? Yes. That's why I said it's important to know this because clearly she has, with, with many other uh, women of color out there around the world, not just in America, they have bought Megan's bullshit. They have brought, bought into it. They believe her. And we're going to talk about how the Ellen interview is going to assist with that. But this is the problem. Now, she's a partner with Megan. I don't want to make it out like if she was white, then she wouldn't have written this. But clearly she feels very strongly and Megan is manipulating and using that. We have moved past the the day and age where anyone who would rally behind our cause is someone we want. Let's go way back to Bobby Kotick and how a charity turned down money because it would be affiliated with Activision Blizzard King and Bobby Kotick. A charity, the one thing a charity exists to do is to get funds to people who need funds to fund, to be charitable, right? And they went, this is morally incorrect. You can no longer get behind someone just because they say they're for your cause when they're not, when everything they do is against it. When the very notion of you affiliating with that person means that your cause just took a hit. Yeah. So we go on. This battle was already won by Megan in the UK's courts. In February, a high court judge ruled that the Mail on Sunday had invaded her privacy when it published correspondence she had written to her father. Now the paper has sought to appeal her victory and paint her as calculating, manipulative, and even diabolical because she dared try to save herself from becoming fodder for their tabloid media machine. This is an attempt by the Mail on Sunday to undo the right to privacy she had already won, all because they published a private letter she wrote to her father in August 2018 in which she begged him to stop talking to the press, a letter she worried would be leaked anyway. Now we know, and this woman presumably knows, if she did her research, that she didn't worry it would be leaked. She strategically planned, I'm not, dare I say hoped it would be leaked, I'm not gonna go that far, planned it by using a word to tug at the heartstrings, by strategically not ending sentences at the bottom of each page. This was way more than worry. It's... If, if anyone wants a tutorial and how to block websites so you never accidentally end up getting there because honestly I, I would happily do that for people because the cut has lost all credibility and they don't even deserve clicks on their website at this point point. and it says it's it's calling out she's calling out the fact that the defendant associated newspapers is using their right to appeal and she's demonizing that. She's demonizing the fact that there was evidence that they have come up across after the conclusion of the summary judgment. Because in the law, you can only introduce fresh evidence in an appeal if it was not available to you during the trial. You didn't even know it existed or you couldn't get it. In this situation, they, I feel like they knew it existed because I remember reading that they did reference that Jason Knopf was heavily um, involved in writing the letter with her and she was involved with um, writing Finding Freedom, but they didn't have the evidence to back it up. And then Jason grew a conscience, or as Megan likes to say, conscious, and 
offered this evidence after the fact, which means they absolutely had every single right to appeal this case. If anyone in any world ever sees Sophia go through a court case herself and she attempts to appeal, deny the appeal immediately. Sophia is no longer allowed to appeal any decision made against her in a court of law because she wants that right taken away from other people. Yeah, she wants... She wants Megan and the Megans of the world, because they are women of color, to get away with whatever they want to do. And you know, I feel very strongly about that because that was exactly the attitude of our peers when Zach decided to involve the authorities after we were physically assaulted and attacked. You know, people are like, how dare you? You should just take it. You should just sit there and take it. We're not going to do anything about it. She's not going to get any better. You should just take it, take it, take it. Yeah. No. And then even when you take steps to mitigate the issue, as Zach did earlier before we met, by literally moving an hour away, an hour driving to an island just to get away from that, that person, that was criticized. You fueled her obsession with you by moving away. You cut off contact to your person and that fueled her obsession. How dare you protect yourself? You're the reason she went cuckoo. <laughs> this is the world we live in, people. And that's why we are so fired up about this. And that's why we're gonna keep talking about it. Okay, Sussex Squad? Go get a life. Stop watching us. Or actually, better yet, maybe the Sussex Squad can learn how to use Google because they wouldn't have to go very far to find the evidence. But and it's clear that they know how to use it. Oh, They're just ignoring just it. Just ignoring it. Just like every sick person surrounds themselves with enablers in this world. The same is happening here, just on a public platform. If you ignore evidence just to fuel your own agenda, you are almost at the same level as being a criminal. She goes on and says, imagine knowing that your every move, even the most intimate communications with your family members could be weaponized against you. Can I say, if Megan truly wanted to keep this conversation with her father private, and I, this is one of the points I wanted to say last week and I forgot, why didn't you pick up the phone? You know why? She answered it. She answered it in a message to Jason Knopf because she, it, it's off her. She wants everything on his conscience and she wants the family and the world to know in writing as proof that she told her father to stop talking to the press and stop da da da, whatever else she accused him of doing. She said it herself. She wrote it so that it can be used as evidence to clear her name. The conversation she had with Sophia to write this article. Sophia. Oh, I don't give a shit because yeah, she doesn't give a shit about facts. <laughs> Fair enough. The, that was a private conversation. That is how you have a private conversation with someone, whether it's by phone, whether they met in person, whether they had secret emails. That's how you do it. I mean, who sends a letter these days? Because a letter is a physical thing, right? Which can easily be physically intercepted, mm -hmm. right? In the age of emails and not to say anything against people who like writing letters i get that it's like you know essentially, it's, an, it's a lost art it's a lost art absolutely totally down for it postcards are still a thing but if you want to keep something confidential imagine imagine the president or prime minister of a country sending confidential information via their post yes and i want to make a point in the army in the first two months of uh it's basic training if you're a soldier for us as officers it's called initial cadet training we were only allowed to handwrite letters to our families and then send them um because they wanted uh well number one we didn't have access to laptops or yeah. phones or anything we were cut off from the world but number two there is an intimacy that comes with handwriting yeah. a note or a letter and it gives it more um more weight than typing yeah. that's at least that's what they told us okay so when I defended Megan, as if I was in court, but when I defended her on my YouTube channels earlier this year, I actually, because that was a major component, the, the, the defendant brought up that she wrote in her cursive handwriting, very fancy kind of Harry Potter-ish handwriting, which she likes to call calligraphy, but it's not really calligraphy. It's beautiful. It's not calligraphy. She likes to call herself a lot of things. So, well, apparently she was a calligrapher um, to get money on the side before. Apparently she was an actress too. But uh, anyways... I defended her and I said, Megan has always been, and you can see this in her old interviews, always been a big fan of handwritten notes. Mm. She always stressed the importance of sending a handwritten note after a job interview or after a successful collaboration. And she always was also very proud of her penmanship. And so 
I brought that up as a point for Megan, going, this is her thing. She likes to handwrite notes. Her father, in particular, encouraged it. Yep. So I saw it as her reaching out to him yep. and appeal, and you know, using that shared moment they had when he was raising her of the importance of a handwritten note. Mm. So she sent him a handwritten letter. That but, was my defense of her. But now let's flip this on its side. If you were worried, if if okay, I love writing songs, mm -hmm. right? If I wanted to communicate something with you discreetly... You wouldn't write a song and publish it. I wouldn't write a song and publish oh, it. Oh, wait, wait. It, no, it's, a, it's not a good analogy. I feel like it would be so romantic if you wrote me a song to communicate something. But if I wanted to communicate with you and it was something that I didn't care if it got shared with the world, it would be a song, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. If I wanted to discreetly communicate with you in any other way, shape or form, specifically with the idea of it being a secret, yeah. I would... First and foremost, tell you in person, which she was more than capable of doing, she regardless of what she said. Yeah. Two, there are these magical devices called phones. And if you dial the right number yeah. and press the call button, you can be talking to someone on the other side of the world. Yeah. Three, text messages, emails, doesn't matter about your fucking calligraphy if you're trying to be discreet. Exactly. And... This is what I'm saying. You, this woman, Sophia, is saying, oh, you know, we, now we're all weaponizing the infiltration of her private letters. It's like she did this. She literally told Jason. We have it in, in evidence that what? she did this so that the world can see that she did her bit. What Sophia is doing is weaponizing BLM. She goes on and says, by this reasoning, any expression of concern by a woman, being Megan here, about being harmed means she cedes her protection from said harm, such as the distorted logic of sexism and racism that governs this case. It's one we should watch closely to see if the courts would uphold her victory or go to trial. On Thursday, this is proof that Sophia wrote this after the Court of Appeal heard the submissions from the defendant. On Thursday, at the conclusion of a three-day hearing, London's Court of Appeal said it would take its time in considering the case. And that's all she said about the Court of Appeal. That is all. She then adds on Megan's tacky uh, statement that she made in the interview we shared last week with you with the New York Times. I would urge you not to read tabloids, Megan told an interviewer early this week. So, and then she goes on to, this is the dangerous part where people, I'm worried that people who read the cut and who will read this article, and you can just go to Sarah Jessica Parker's Instagram, don't leave her hate, please, that's not... That's never, I mean, ever a solution. You can leave her constructive criticism. If you want. But don't make it personal attacks. Don't leave her hate. And I did read lots of constructive criticism. Yeah. But all pushed to the bottom of the pile. The, the first few 500 messages, are, comments are, thank you for sharing this. My heart bleeds for Megan. Um, I mean, look, I'm going to read a few. I'm going to read a few. Why Megan not? would literally make someone's heart bleed if it meant that she could get further up in life. She still has it up. 622 comments, and I'm going to read just a few. Thank you for reposting this. Thank, this is another person. Thank you so much for amplifying the story. It means so much to me that we have bigger figures like yourself showing the indecency and disgusting, horrible treatment that Megan faced. Another one says, it's wild to read this. I feel so badly. Thank, thank you for sh Oh, wait, oh wait, I already did not forget that. None of this is surprising. Anytime Meghan Markle is mentioned on IG and Twitter, it just becomes a hate fest. It's all bots, but my question is who is behind it? Uh, excuse me, sir. Did you read that Twitter debunked the bot thing? Or are you just like everyone? Well, not everyone. Like a lot of people are doing. Are you just halting at the bot sentinel report? It has been debunked by Twitter itself. Twitter has said they're not bots. They're real people. Do your research. Educate yourself before you post public comments and embarrassing yourselves. The one thing that people don't get oh. like this is when you leave school, that is not the end of your education. Yeah. And you can no longer just... You don't, you don't know everything you need to, know, need to know when you leave school. Far from it. And you should always be learning how to do more things and learning and just basically life is a big classroom. Yep. Learn. Don't just sit there. My dad and, calls it the university of life. Exactly. Don't just sit there and go, someone published this. I'm going to take, gonna take it. Yeah. And this comment says, not surprising, but more astonishing that people will go this far to hate someone of color. 
Thank and you for taking away from the cause because you know what? There are people out there feel facing real discrimination who you've just taken the spotlight away from because Rachel feels like she can put BLM on the back of her freaking car and just be done with it. I could go on and on. There are 622 comments and I'm not going to. But if you want to know how dangerous these things are with perpetuating this narrative that she is a victim and has done nothing wrong, one of the comments was... The media has treated her like crap from day one. I'm sorry. That is 100,000% false. No. The media, the British media that everyone now loves to paint as racist, adored her. That one article you keep referencing, Megan is literally straight out of Compton about her mom's shady past, which I don't know if it's true or not. That was one article that you all keep referencing. The rest of it was just fawning all over her. You know what, Lady C, I learned from a couple of episodes ago actually liked Megan to begin with, much like me. Angela Levin, the um, royal correspondent who is now completely against Megan, also said, and she wrote Harry's biography and was working actively with him when he met Megan. Yeah. And she liked her. Yeah. We all started off liking, well, not Zach because he didn't care, but we all started off liking her. I always, I, I always felt like something was wrong, but then again, I, I guess I'm allergic to spoiled brats. So now the rest of the article really just links the history of black women being attacked and the thing is racism and sexism again you've seen it here on this article which we can click out of now um racism and sexism against a woman of color stop coming after me you know i'm just as i'm the same color as megan mid-tone caramel sometimes pale sometimes tan depending on the sun don't come after me because you're, you're you're racist if you do mm -hmm. i am not technically white I mean, biologically I am Caucasian, but according to Megan, that, that doesn't count. And again, I have been someone who was subjected to racism in Australia because I am darker than your average Australian, even though he's half Italian and he doesn't burn, he tans. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends which side. It's like, this side's white, <laughs> this side's olive. But um, I have been subjected to racism. So if you come here onto my platform and insult me, you are sexist and racist and you go against everything that you fight for in Megan's name. And for Sofia, qui bono, huh? Why'd you write this? What do you get out of it? Is it this? Is it clout? All of, this, all of this, this is what she gets. Maybe she's buying the yacht that Bobby Kotick had his eye on. All right. This is again gonna be a long article, having a long article, long podcast, but we did notice in the comments that you all thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. So we're gonna start being more lax because it's all about what you want. Honestly, we read the comments and it's, we, we base our um, content on your feedback because when, that's what counts. That's what matters. When I read the comments and I get to the end, I mean, I can only do this in the first few days, but when I get to the end, I, I hear the Xbox achievements uh, in my head. Achievement unlocked. Read all comments. Yeah. No, um, they're, they're, for the most part, wonderful. I only, I don't read the negatives because I read the comments early on. And then when I revisit all the non- because there, there is constructive criticism Absolutely. that I read. Uh, for example, you know, Ethan Ark, who said, oh, maybe teaching psychology in school isn't really the best idea. Yeah. There is always an opposing, or even with the red dress, a lot of you said um, that the problem with that red dress wasn't necessarily whether it was appropriate for military uh, occasion, which is the angle I took because that's what people asked me on Instagram. They said, hey, you're in the military. Can you shed some light on the dress code? Uh, I understand that she was very overdressed for the occasion. I understand that it was, in my opinion and in the opinion of almost everyone, a ploy to, number one, distract from the appeal. Because notice how they went on this kind of New Jersey visit, New York, she did that talk, she went to the, the gala or whatever, the award ceremony. And people are saying it's all an effort to distract. Absolutely. Um, Here's a question too. Who's raising her children? If she's out all the time, who's raising well, her children? I, I, I don't want to nitpick on the Ellen interview. I've only got highlights. I will tell you that because there is stuff that I don't think is worth commenting on. There are many channels commenting on it and you can go there for that. But she did kind of, you know, heavily insinuate that she was directly involved with raising the kids. Bullshit. Not Not the help. When was the last time she was home? I mean, yeah, I mean, she was in New York all that time. But exactly. yeah, I, 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 I acknowledge that she was entirely overdressed the makeup and everything. It was all to be the center of attention in at that event. Do I agree with that? No. 
she should have, you know, she is capable of dressing very demurely and yeah. very understated. In fact, it's her thing, yeah. you know, outside of the royal family, especially pre Harry. She was always, you know, in blacks and in very not yeah. loud outfits. And I love that about her back in the day. I still do, you know, the, the her old style. Even when she showed up, like, on the New York Times interview, just black, very understated. She knows how to do it. You, you said that last week. As she knows how to do it, the, she chose not to. Exactly. The fact that she knows how to be understated, classy, demure makes it more kind of obvious that she, when she wants to, you know, be the scent, the bell of the yeah. ball, it's intentional. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just typical of her. It's like not even about her and she had to make it about her. So I watched the interview um, with Samantha, Mar Samantha Markle that Dan Wooten had. And once again, Samantha just came across so articulate, so credible, so such a good head on her shoulders so real you know it's funny because megan that's her thing she wants to come across as real salt of the earth down to earth relatable california gal and, Sam Zuckerberg. and samantha does it effortlessly yeah Poor, she has um i believe she has ms multiple scl sclerosis and she's on a wheelchair and megan knows this in her graduation photo samantha's in 2008 she was on that wheelchair yeah and megan was stooping down smiling next to her and i'm like you know your sister is ill but she doesn't care because it's not about her so in the interview she said many many great things and i'm sure um you have all watched it two highlights she is considering suing megan for falsely claiming and finding freedom feeding the information as the evidence now shows from jason Knopf that samantha had uh three children from three different fathers it absolutely has the potential and probably already has tarnished her reputation she's already known in the press not so much now, definitely in the early days when the press loved Megan. She was known as the nasty, jealous half-sister. And so her reputation has already taken a hit. That's not even up for debate. So um, she is considering suing. And she, in my opinion, definitely ticks all elements of defamation. Yep. So I don't know how she's going to fund it. Defamation claims are incredibly expensive. I'm talking tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the issue here is Megan has access to unlimited funds now from Harry. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, people like to say that she is very well off by herself. I, I don't know. I, I don't see. I mean, I'm not saying she wasn't doing well pre Harry. Of course she was. She was an actress. She was traveling. She wore fancy clothes. But, you know, it's obvious she married into the royal family. The purse is not the, the, the funding is not coming from her. She didn't even own a house, uh, and she was almost 40, you know, when when she met Harry. She was 36, 37, and she didn't own a house, and I would think... You would think, unfortunately, in, in this world we live in, it is a, it is a status thing, right? Yeah. Oh, owning a property, owning a house. But it's changed so much over the years. It used to be that everyone can own a house, and then, uh, well, bye-bye markets, bye-bye stock. So the only barrier I worry about with Samantha, unless it's going to be publicly funded like through a GoFundMe or something, is of course she doesn't have the money that Megan has. Money, uh, Megan is probably now like a billionaire through all these deals they've been, they've been signing. You know, I, I wouldn't put it past that being a fact that they're billionaires at this point. So it's, it's problematic. You know, that's when you start thinking, you know, as a lawyer, you start advising your, your clients, is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to, number one, do you even have the money to fund this? You're probably going to go bankrupt after this. It's a big deal. So whether she's actually going to go through with it, I believe really depends on whether she has the finances to do it. Also, the, the, the mental, uh, not the mental health, but just she already has MS and these autoimmune disorders and uh, diseases are aggravated by stress. She is in her mid 50s, I believe. Is it worth her health? It's bad enough that people would stress her if she was just a normal human being, let alone that she has something a physical condition that is then aggravated by stress and then she's related to Rachel. Jeez. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to... If she, she comes across as very strong, but at the end of the day, stress is stress. We're not immune to it and mm. it, it, it will take a hit and I worry that her condition will only escalate and aggravate because of that stressful period. So, But theoretically on paper, absolutely, she can definitely... Um, sue for defamation because she can prove that she did not do these things and was not that kind of a mother. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so another thing she debunked, which surprised me because it was one of the stories that I heard when I liked Megan 
and I watched an interview that which I have pulled up here because I want to show you guys how this woman not only has an excellent memory but rehearsed her answers even before she was a duchess even before she she had already met Harry because you'll see there was that beaded bracelet that she and Harry wore uh, in the early stages of their romance and she used that strategically to tell the world because she, she wasn't meant to tell the world it was meant to be hush hush she wore that bracelet and strategically posed with it in multiple um, Instagram photos did events wearing it and that's how the world knew you know the other, she succeeded the other thing that I hate is people who will just do the opposite of what you tell them simply because you told them not to and then she wore a necklace that had H this is I found this out recently you know how I have a necklace yeah um, of our initials? Yeah. I found out maybe two days ago that she did that as another way to show the world, because she yeah. knew the paparazzi would take photos of her, that she was dating Harry before she was before they announced it, when it was meant to be private. Gosh. H&M. The fact that she couldn't even follow a simple instruction and had to literally inflate her ego that way is should have been warning bells. Harry, do not marry this person. I wouldn't be surprised if someone already had that conversation with him way before they were engaged. So... What, she, what Megan said in that interview, which I will play in 2016. Listen to this story. Um, hopefully we won't get a copyright claim, but I will try to play it out at length so that you can see the, the, the it's either, again, it's either she has a great memory, which flies in the face of, I didn't remember that I fed information to the authors of this book. Only, only a, you know, a few, a couple of years tops. By the time she filed the claim, it was less than a year, I believe, ago. So, I guess the short-term memory is shot, but the long-term term memory is primo. Um, and then she, yeah, because she repeats the story. So let's have a look. People are up-and-coming bloggers. Is is your site called MyName.com, or is your site a bigger? I'm struggling as an auditioning actor. I mean, I shared this story on. Do you guys know that magazine, Darling? Love, love darling that magazine oh, isn't a so great i saw some anthropology and i emailed i don't know i like flipped to the back page purpose, and i emailed obviously. press or someone there i was like hi i just love to work with you guys um and i ended up writing a piece for them and one of the stories that i shared in it was um <laughs> when i was auditioning i had the most beat up hand-me-down but awesome ford explorer sport you don't understand how much i love this car and it, um, so in the morning, would dad, start and it sounded that. like a steamboat engine. This thing was... <laughs> she didn't say that her dad gave her this car. This wasn't a car that she bought by herself. Like, on its last leg, my license plate in the front was hanging on with a bungee cord. Um, and then this just epic day happened where the lock stopped opening with the key. And the clicker wouldn't open the front doors. <sighs> And um, I'm punctuating this with commentary just to minimize the chance of a copyright strike. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, that doesn't happen to a car. It does. Um, an older car that Zach used to drive, uh, which was also a hand me down from um, a parent, did that. It just all the locks stopped working yeah. um, and it didn't need to get fixed. And it also operated either with a key that stopped working physically, manually, and also the button. And then the passenger side door was that. All that, that still worked, right? The passenger side? Or did it also not work? There was one work? time where it did work and then one time where it didn't where okay. both locks went. So. I'm mentioning this because a lot of people, when she's done with the story, I'll tell you what they're saying where that apparently debunks the story. Um, I mean, the fact that it's coming from Rachel's mouth debunks yeah. the story. But so. I'm just saying it's a valid problem because I've seen it happen with Zach's old car. And I couldn't afford to fix this car and this was how I got from one audition to the other. So this was, you know... This was my girl. She was my ride or die car. And, um, and what I would start to do was literally go to these auditions, park at the back of the parking lot, and then I could open my trunk. For whatever reason, the trunk would still open with the key. Open my trunk. And that happened in Zach's old car. The trunk would still open with the key. I remember that. And like play it off, like look around and be like, oh, I'm just digging for a headshot or a highlighter. Crawl out. Crawl the into the back of my car pull the trunk and then climb to the front seat to drive off to my next audition this by the way went on for five months um but it's the stuff that we do and yep so that's the 2016 version 
which I watched when I liked Megan and I thought it was a cute story. I giggled and laughed along as I watched her talk about it. Not gonna lie. You know what? If you took an AI and you punched in all the Hollywood stories that all the other celebrities were making up, I feel like this is what the algorithm would do. So, fast forward to Ellen. Only this week, at the time of filming, last week when you guys see it, and listen to her recounting the story. A very special car. Yes, it had a life of its own. So I had this very, very old Ford Explorer Sport. And at a certain point, the, the key stopped working on the driver's side. So you couldn't get yourself in through the door. So after auditions, I would park at the back of the parking lot and I would open the trunk and climb in and then pull it shut behind me and crawl over all my seats to get out. That's how I would come to and fro. So I'm really gonna try to punctuate the Ellen uh, segment in case, cause I have a feeling if anyone's gonna slap us with a copyright claim, it's gonna be Ellen. Wasn't that almost, uh, it's not even done cause she brings up certain small details that are again, word for word, what she said at this point five years ago. But wasn't that already word for word? That was verbatim. That was, I, I, oh. Okay, let's, let's keep going. <laughs> Oh my God. I know, so it was not did ideal. Did anyone ever see, I know you parked far away, but did anyone ever see you climb through a trunk? No, to get no, I would play it off. I would go like, oh, I'm just looking for my resume and my <laughs> highlighters for my script. Oh, maybe it's back there. And, and then, then crawl all the way. Literally the same way. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the oh. highlighter. Crawl right in, pull the, tr for me, it's specifically the highlighter and the resume. Two minor details that, um, I guess we're done here. Thank goodness. But we're going to come back. We're not done. Because, uh. and this is what, okay. So, two minor details that she remembered, which to me, if I were pro Megan, would only prove that it was a true story. Because when something's, when something's true, you remember these small things. That's not to say when you're a liar, especially a very rehearsed, seasoned liar, you can still remember lies. If you're intelligent like Megan, we, you know, I have dealt with probably the stupidest person I've ever met in my entire life. Um... And they couldn't keep their lives straight. But when you get an intelligent person like Megan, it's kind of harder to nail them. Not to say it's not impossible, especially when you have a sister who will offer you this gem of a revelation. Just, uh, you know, a pretty cushy life. And my father had come to visit me in actually her Nissan. I don't know, a friend was borrowing his car. I don't know what he was doing. So she came to visit me, he came to visit me in a Nissan and ended up having a rollover accident in the snow in Arizona. So when that vehicle, um, the insurance company um, pay, or paid out the vehicle and that she got the new Explorer. So she got a very nice Ford Explorer. It wasn't a beat up old mm. yada yada. And I mean, your I dad's an Emmy Award winning sound engineer, you know, on Jen. Not sound engineer, Dan Wu. And I believe he was a lighting director. Please do your research. I mean, I mean, he's human, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's not not so much a problem, but yeah, we have to keep our sides. So, of, yeah. So that story was debunked just like that by Samantha. And anyone can see. In, in hindsight, I have to say, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. As far back as 2016, that story was very performative. Mm -hmm. it was, I mean, I used to think Megan is a very... Because I am also a very expressive person. And Lady C always loves to make fun of Megan using her hands. We're very expressive with our hands. And so I never saw it as a sign that she was exaggerating. I just saw it as she's an animated person. But when you really watch it now and the Ellen interview, and then you compare that with Samantha's delivery, straightforward story with no embellishment, who's the more credible person? I mean, forget that. Samantha has to date not been, not been caught in one lie. Nope. Not one lie. And nope. she's been vocal in the press since 2017. Not one lie. So that leads us to the Ellen interview. Now, this isn't going to be a shit fest all over Megan for this interview because believe it or not, I hate Ellen. I actually hate her. And ever since I was a child and she would come up on TV, her show, for some reason, and I wouldn't watch, you know, I would be flicking through and my mom would watch, it's just there playing. She always came across to me as an incredibly nasty, horrible person, so classist. 
So I am higher and mightier than thou. Celebrities to Megan, uh, Ellen are, and she said something that basically insinuated that she thinks this, by the way. I'm not just, this is not just what I'm gathering. She, I just don't remember what she said exactly. And she said it when I was a kid. She said, you know, celebrities and normal people. You know what I mean? Fuck off. Yeah, I, I hate people like that. And that's why, and for those of you who don't know, Ellen, my first thought when I saw that Megan collaborated with her was, oh, bully, meet bully. Yeah. Because Ellen was canceled only last year for being a monster bully in the workplace, making people cry, um, getting people, well, I don't know if it's fired or they quit because they've been so mistreated. Does that ring a bell? That reminds me of someone. Exactly. So it's like two bullies in a pod, you know, two peas in a Actually pod. Actually reminds me of three people. <laughs> Who's the third one? It sounds a lot like Bobby Kotick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And guess what? Uh, Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani from Theranos yep. also rut routinely threaten people. The evidence is an email. Yep. So, um... And Bobby Kotick literally said he would have someone killed. Yeah, he's <laughs> insane. So... That was my first thought when I realized that they collaborated. The second thing is, Ellen's show, for those of you who don't know, is actually, this is the farewell season because she's been canceled. And I believe she's being replaced by Jennifer Hudson next year. But this is her end and she didn't choose to end it. This is a direct result from what I've seen. Again, this is just based on the news. A direct result of her cancellation is the end of her show. So the way I see it is she wants clout. She is a bully herself, so she clearly doesn't see a problem with Megan potentially also being a bully based on the, you know, if the palace reports come out. And we can finally say that instead of saying allegedly. But she's just like her. So obviously, to, to Ellen, it was a win-win. It was like, I'll get clout because Megan is, she gives people clout. It's just, um, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I, I, I do wonder if it was also very much a, I'm not sure who else is on her um show in the last season but maybe Rachel was one of the only last people willing to be on the show I have the read I have read something like that 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 this season was just based on people who are just desperate to be on yeah. you know in public but um and then I, f I learned through the interview that they're friends they're neighbors so once again biased um, utilizing someone who is al already has a personal connection to you I but, mean, I can see Rachel moving into that neighborhood because Ellen lives there, going over and introducing herself to Ellen, ha making up bullshit conversation to try and get in. And then eventually, oh, wow, wouldn't it be great if I was on your show? I can see that a whole thing happening. So Ellen trash. And I'm like, Megan, what are you doing? You know, it's not like your reputation could tank any lower. What are you doing on Ellen's show? It's not exactly the best move. But from what I've read... It was last minute. There was no build up to it, no hype, no nothing. And people are speculating that it's another distraction ploy from the appeal. Of course. It because is. guess what? Of all the topics that were brought up in this show, the appeal was not one of them. Before we get into the points that I wanted to bring out in this interview, because they lead, um, what I'm going to talk about is linked directly to what I want to open with, is Ellen actually made fun of Megan. Back in 2017, when the engagement was first announced, now, she said she had no idea who she was. So, Megan was not all on Ellen's radar. I can't find the clip where she made fun of her. Um, it says that it was recently unearthed, but it was never screened. Yeah. The main point is this. She said about Megan, her name is Megan Markle. She's from LA. She's an actress. She's been on General Hospital, blah, blah, blah. And this is true. She was once the holder of Case 24 on Deal or No Deal. Um, and at that point, the audience erupted into laughter. Can we switch over to this article? Because here is the photo of Megan being the briefcase girl, which I have defended before. I don't know if it was on in public or maybe in conversation. I, I go like, you know, you got to do what you got to do to to kind of build yourself a name in Hollywood. Of course, that was before I knew what kind of a person she is. I have nothing against people starting out in the bottom. I think we've talked oh, about this before. Of course. I worked in um, what you guys know as Burger King, and here it's Hungry Jack's as a 16-year-old. There's nothing wrong with, with working hard and working your way up, which is why I used to respect her, because I saw that she worked her way up from deal or no deal to a role in suits. So 
anyways, um, so the audience laughed, and you guys know how Ellen goes. She pauses and lets them have a good laugh and kind of laughs with them. And she goes, which means if Harry had picked the other model, I could have gotten one million. So darn it. This is not, this is just the beginning. She makes fun that they probably, he probably proposed to her on a royal jumbotron. And then, in the same stand-up routine, Ellen told the audience she had previously met Megan and had even convinced her to adopt a dog. This is absolutely true. We have met before, she said. This is what she, Megan, said about me in an interview. I was in LA and I went to this dog rescue place. Then Ellen and Portia de Rossi walk in and Ellen goes, is that your dog? And I said, no. And she's like, you have to take that dog. So I brought him home because Ellen told me to. Now Ellen says, that's amazing. I mean, she adopted a dog because I told her to. I don't even remember the story actually, but obviously she does. And she does whatever I tell her to do. So Megan, if you're watching, I have something else to tell you. Invite me to that wedding. So here she is making fun of her. It, literally making fun of her going, wow, I don't even remember this, but I'm just gonna go with it. And I was saying this to Zach earlier today because this is one of the little stories that I brought up. I was like, can you imagine adopting a dog and proudly saying it? Um, we can click out, sorry. And proudly saying it as if it's something to be proud of that you were that it wasn't because you connected with that dog. It was because a and, celebrity and, told you. And you to. wanted to take him home. I believe this is Bogart. It might be Bogart. She doesn't name the. I think it is because in another article I read that uh, apparently Megan told Ellen that she would call him Bogart, and that's when Ellen went, "Yep, get him. You you, you have a name for him. Get him." Bogart is the dog that she, Megan very easily and willingly left behind. Yeah. Um, to, she does to, that to, to move to her, to the UK. She does that to things she apparently loves. Well, people are defending and saying he was an old dog and it would have been very unhealthy for him to travel, um, you know, especially, what is it, transatlantic. Oh, come but on. You're going know. into the royal family. You could have given that dog first class. She she left him. She discarded him. So I, I've always wondered, not always, sorry. Just like her father, just like her brother, just like her sister, just like anyone else who knew her before the royal family. I just wonder whether she didn't even want him and just adopted him literally because Ellen told her so. She's definitely that sort of person. Which leads us to the skit. Now, I have to warn you guys that... There are some things that people are nitpicking with this comedy skit, which I will um, try to watch and keep interrupting again for copyright purposes. I, I have a problem with the way that people are honing in on certain things. That I asked the question on Instagram yesterday as well in a post. Is this a sexism thing? You know, would, would this have been the same reaction if Harry was acting this way? The first thing being... So it starts off with Megan going to a set of stalls in Universal Studios parking, whatever. What it was a parking lot. It wasn't even a public market. And the gig is, and Ellen does this with everyone, and it's always cringe. It's always embarrassing. I don't care if it's Will Smith or Madonna. It's not that it's Megan that's making it cringe. It's the whole act is cringe. So she tells her what to do. Now, Megan, if you can hear me, touch your elbow. All right. If you touch your nose if you can hear me. Okay. Do a squat if you can hear me. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Many, many, many people, everyone, everyone who's reporting on this is focusing on this squat. And I asked, this is the question that I asked on Instagram yesterday, and I have taken down the answers that I got because almost all of them I completely agree with and it's my opinion and then we'll ask you for your opinion mm. my question was as I said is it wrong for a woman to squat in public and I'm not talking about training working out you know I squat so but just squatting the way Megan did because to me my initial thing was come on come on you're gonna go for that if, if Harry squatted if William squatted if George Clooney squatted if a man squatted mm. it would it have been a big deal so this is what a few of the fellow Plutonians on Instagram have said, um, I will keep them anonymous, but you know, oh, actually I have taken down the post because the purpose was just to get answers because in the post I was also squatting and then you, you swipe and Megan was squatting and I was like, who squatted better as a joke? But it was that, it was the serious question was the, the purpose of that post. It's gone now. 
Um, first, Plutonian said, I think it's excessive to literally follow every move a woman does. If this was a man, it wouldn't be open to, to discussion, would it? My opinion, too. I agree with you. Second opinion... Second, second, okay, sorry. Second opinion says, well, as I wouldn't squat like that, for me, that's more what a guy would do. I really wouldn't expect it off me gain. It's not very ladylike, and she gives off the vibe she's better than you, so I'd say no. I really don't see her as a duchess as she carries out no royal duties, but she knows if she didn't use it, she'd be plain me gain. I agree in the sense that the vibe I'm getting from this answer is a duchess shouldn't be behaving this way, yeah. which is arguable, but... Um, where, you know, everyone's opinions are different. That's why I want to read them out. This particular plutonium believes that it's not ladylike to squat in public like that. Um, it might be a generational difference as well, because I have noticed older women like Lady C think it's absolutely objectionable to squat like that. Whereas I was the kid in school that was told by teachers to close my legs when I sit down yep. because I manspread. And it's called manspreading. See, that's the thing, because men are allowed to do it. No one... White, but bats an eyelid if a man's spreading his legs but if a girl's doing it it's like oh my god that is not ladylike that's literally what my teachers would tell me mm. that's not becoming of a lady is it and I'm like well I'm not a lady another answer just totally embarrassing I believe in royals having fun with class yeah very that's valid totally very yeah. valid another person says it goes to show you that MM will do anything to be accepted that's what it looks like Ellen was on the edge of passive aggressive aggressive to ridicule even suggesting it. She looks in labor there. I agree. Ellen was a nasty fucking bitch for even making Megan do that. This is why I don't like Ellen. Megan's not the only person who's been painted this way as a result of Ellen's um, skits. Oh, it's all in the name of fun. I'm sorry. Making people look like idiots on national television is not fun. Whether they're Megan, whether they're a likable person. Who's really likable? I don't know. Matt Damon, Angelina Jolie. I don't care. It's not funny or it's not, in my, in my opinion, not a, not a good idea to poke fun and ridicule someone just to, you know, make people laugh. Remembering the talk shows that I occasionally see and I can't think of any off the top of my head, but when I see someone on a talk show... Normally the fun is something they have together, not at the expense of someone. And even exactly. if a celebrity tells an embarrassing story, yeah. they're telling it. And, you know, that's, I remember one time when um, Will Smith was with his son, Jaden. Whatever. Um, on a talk show. And he says, see, when I was young, I was just as stupid, but there was no instant net. So I was stupid in private. Yeah. Essentially, you know, and yeah, so yeah. there's like... There's it's voluntary pro- sharing of jokes and exactly. embarrassing moments. It's not manufactured to the point where one person is clearly sitting in the chair watching the other person do everything they tell them being the puppeteer yeah she reminds me of um the older generation will probably won't know him but for the for those of you who are more our age david dobrik he's canceled now i think but he's this horrible youtuber who literally made billions and made a career out of making fools out of people in his vlogs and that's what Ellen's reminding me of, except she's in her 60s and David was 18, 19, 20, I think up until 24. So he had youth on his side to um, excuse him. Not really, but at least he had that one mitigating factor. Back to the comments. Another Plutonian says, I've seen all the possible memes about. I'm sure it wouldn't make all that noise if it were a man. But then since she likes being the Duchess so much, she should behave like one. Yeah. Very, again, yeah. I pretty much agree. Shoulds or shouldn'ts aside, it's just a terrible idea. Yes, it is. It's not funny. It's pathetic. It made Megan look awful. Um, Not that she needs any help in that department. (laughs) Um, Another Plutonian. Technically, she's not a working member of the royal family, so she can do whatever. Was it funny? No. Was it cringy? Absolutely. Ellen is not funny and neither is Megan. If it was someone else more humorous, maybe it would have come off funnier. The only problem here is the use of the title. She should shed the duchess and then proceed at her own merit. Let's see if that would work. 100% agree with you. Absolutely. Um, Another Plutonian. I think the fact that she's willing to behave so ungraciously shows she's not a real royal. Mm -hmm. The entire interview, but especially the skit, was so cringe to watch that I barely got through it. Me too. I think it just shows she's willing to go to great, great embarrassing lengths to look like she's relatable and just like us regular folk except in thousands of dollars worth of clothing and jewelry. 
Uh, P.S. Both Rachel and Ellen are accused of treating their staff horribly, so maybe they bonded over that. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if one ran from Rachel's house over to Ellen's <laughs> and then ran from Ellen's house and went, wow, I thought that would be better. What was I thinking? Yeah, they go on to say, I'm just surprised she'd choose to attach her name to Ellen's at a time when she wants people to like her so much. 100%. Um, another comment, I personally don't find Ellen funny, and this was especially cringy. I don't think Megan had much choice but to go along with it. She's trying to be likable, but the damage has been done, in my opinion. Yep. I have no issue with squatting in public. Live and let live. It's one of the least offensive things she's done. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Um, the whole thing is cringy, but then again, I've never liked those skits. So it's not specifically about Megan. I would have thought the same, whoever it was. Again, I absolutely feel the same way. It also says more about them that they thought a woman squatting would be embarrassing and played off as funny. So, it, yeah, it means Ellen knows or thinks in a sexist way that a woman squatting is embarrassing. So she made Megan do it. That's a very good way of seeing it. It's interesting. Has, has no one commented on the fact that it also, especially with the whole manspreading comment, from what I understand of someone who's not been accused of manspreading being a man, the idea of it is that if you are wearing something... Like a dress. Like a dress. Skirt. She's a wearing skirt, a skirt, yeah. Right? That's... This is, a, this is what I thought. I didn't think the pose was necessarily not ladylike. Sit however you want. But if you were wearing a short skirt as... You're showing your underwear. That's what I thought it was all about. So I would say, here, Ellen is wearing pants. If Ellen was to squat, wouldn't bat an eye. Because it's like, okay, she's wearing pants. Yeah, but Megan didn't reveal anything. It's a long skirt. Of course she didn't reveal anything. But I think that... I see well, what you're saying. Yeah. That the origins of them don't spread your legs is because back in the day, women wore, wore skirts. Exactly. Um, I see what you're saying. I have been told not to manspread while wearing pants. That is so bullshit. So it's just the pose that was offensive yeah. to the adults when I was doing it as a kid. Um, another comment, I'm going to paraphrase them just in the interest of time. Again, just drop the title. This person says, just yeah. drop the title. Do what you want. But it's hypocritical if you keep using that title and you're trying to be royal and better and holier yeah. than thou and the Duchess of Sussex, but then you're also behaving in a way that would be more appropriate for Meghan Markle to behave in. Absolutely. You know? If she wanted to actually act like a royal, I think she needs a bracelet on her wrist, not the one that Harry got her. And instead of it saying, what would Jesus do, WWJD, it needs to say, what would Kate do? So just yeah. replace that letter because <laughs> that's what I think of. I go, if Kate was, would Kate do this? Yeah. Because I don't think, I, again, haven't been into the Royals since, you know, this piece of trash blew in the wind. But the, I, if. Wait, didn't we say it? Now forget about it. I don't really see Kate doing this. I don't see, but I don't see Kate being a clout goblin and ending up on an Ellen show. Yeah, she's not. That's the two, you're comparing apples with oranges, basically. Exactly. But um, that's, that's, you know, she's going to keep the title, start thinking about how royals actually act instead of just trying to yeah. do whatever the fuck you want just because you think you're cool for being a rebel because you're yeah. not. And this is what happens. Yeah. Another comment goes that Ellen actually, in comparison to other celebrities with other skits, she made Rachel do more embarrassing things in comparison. And again, if she wants to be royal, this was too desperate. If you want to be a private citizen, then it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's all it's, about that's the, the thing. That's why I really wanted to read them out. We're all on the same page here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just either, you know, it's embarrassing, but also, one person said, which I agree, um, she, that they felt sorry for Megan because Ellen made a complete fool out of her. But that's what, you know that Ellen's going to do this. I mean, I haven't watched Ellen, but I, I recognize this no 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 megan asked for this that's what i'm saying as in megan specifically requested that they do the skit that's what i'm saying you know that ellen's gonna make you do stupid shit mm -hmm. like you, you what even if you went into this and they didn't ask for the skit you know that so moving on oh sorry you sound like you want to say more i was just gonna say my take from this oh yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> so rude she is the duchess of squatters <gasps> because that's pretty intense because squatters are people who live in residences. Yeah. That and both her and Harry find themselves trying to live in places they don't belong. Well, I thought you were going to go more of the route of she's never had to, uh, where does it work for her supper or whatever it is? Uh, sing, no, she, sing, sing for her supper. She, she, she benefits off other people's 
Well, um, the idea is that squatters, right? People who live in a band and look no, obviously... No, a squatter can live in someone's house, in your property, um, and at some point you can't kick them out in some countries. Harry is part of the Misinformation Commission. Mm. Rachel being a politician. Rachel being in the royal family. Rachel literally doing anything because she really doesn't belong and she's desperately trying to find a place. Throw things wanna, at the wall and see what sticks. But I want to know what your thoughts are of a woman squatting in public. I don't really give a shit so, because obviously in this case, right? I, look, especially because it's a, it's a dress, I would think to myself, well, if a woman was squatting in public, how would she pick something up off the ground? I'm thinking exactly. practically. Obviously, I have a problem with someone squatting if you can if they're revealing everything because yeah. that's public indecency. Yeah. But it just comes down to the title. If you want to hop on Ellen and being an idiot, that's absolutely fine. Just go as Meghan Markle. Just go. Yeah. Don't drag the title behind you because the only reason she's doing this is because she wants clout. That's so, it. So it's so desperate and obvious and pathetic. Mic drop. Jeez, that was intense. <laughs> and then, finally, she goes to a cookie stand. You know, kudos to her, she actually ate it. Most actresses would be like, I'm not gonna eat that. Like I said, her followers are spinning um, gold out of rubbish like this. And this is why I'm saying um, I blame Ellen for this. I mean, Megan asked for it, but I'm, I'm guessing, obviously, she didn't know what Ellen was going to make her do. And the reason I find this all the more malicious from Ellen is because of what I read to you earlier of Ellen saying, clearly, she does everything I tell her to. She even adopted a dog. So this seems like an, a play on that. A play on, I'm, she does everything I tell her to. I'm going to make her look like an utter and complete fool. I think it's also Ellen going, well, this is my last season. So either this is going to be such a hit that it's not going to matter if, uh, you know, it, it, like I might get called back for another season because I'm so popular or it doesn't matter what I do. It's not like celebrity is going to hop back on my show. She even makes fun of the title, The Duchess of Sussex. Have a listen to this. We're back with Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. And uh, <laughs> so the bench uh, by uh, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. Um, tell everybody. And Megan laughs every time, you know, she's making fun of your damn title. I mean, I know it's Ellen and it's meant to be a lighthearted show, but I feel like, you know, you wouldn't be doing that to, oh, we're talking to Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, and then people giggle and laugh. It, it just wouldn't happen. And Catherine herself definitely wouldn't be laughing um, because they take the title seriously. Yeah. It's not a joke to them. Yeah, It's well, a job position. But that's just it, right? This is a job she hasn't earned. She doesn't do anything for. She is absolutely qualified to even be called a royal, let alone a duchess of anything. And then when she uses the title, people go, what the hell? Yeah. And you, you make a mockery out of it. Whether, yeah. whether she intended to or not, that's yeah. what happened. And that's what I feel like, you know, if, if, if people, especially the British... Um, citizens feel insulted by this mockery of their royal family i feel like they're entitled to feel insulted she's the duchess of mockery because anything she lends her name to is mocked and i found this really interesting um article also saying that this appearance on ellen is kind of like a it's prophesizing the fact that megan will one day be president because barack obama was on uh ellen in 2007 in 2008 he became president Kamala Harris was on in 2018, and in 2019, she was running for vice president. So now they're saying this is proof. There's a lo long line of politicians that have sat on that couch and became either president or vice president. But um, I don't know. My, my concern with talking about the Ellen show is it will and has succeeded in winning more people over. And making them believe that Megan is this goofy, adorable, relatable, down-to-earth person. Um, some people said, yeah, she's trying to be goofy when she's wearing thousands of dollars worth of clothing, which she was. 
It didn't look like thousands of dollars worth of clothing. That's the thing with pathetic. clothing. It never looks like, you know, it doesn't look like it costs much, but it does. I've seen your Andrew Joe walk down the street wearing that. But my point being is people are taking uh, offense to that, you know, the, the juxtaposition of sitting there and going, I'm this really relatable person mm. um, who had a broken up, beat up car only a few years ago, or not, not a few years, I guess it was like 15 plus years ago at this point, but... And it was sitting in thousands of dollars. Uh, I may have a different opinion on that that mm, people might not agree with. Um, I, it was more of an issue when it was funded by the, the crown, funded by the royal family, by the purse, her clothing. Because I do believe she racked up, like the bills she racked up on, you know, through the royal family with her clothing was, were extensive. And she was the most expensively dressed duchess in, in Europe. But now if it's... We don't know, number one, that she's not borrowing them. She has been caught with tags on her clothes before, which indicates that they're just temporary on loan to give clout to the designer and then she gives it back, at which point it's not wasting money. Or she bought it with her own money. So I have, I feel like it's not our place to, well, my place. I'm going to say our as in the two of us. I'm not saying, you, know, you can say what you want. I don't feel comfortable judging someone based on how much they're spending if they've bought it themselves, unless... It depends on the situation, like we talked about Harlem. You don't go to a school of underprivileged children in need, a lot of orphans, decked in jewels and thousands of dollars worth no, of No, you don't. That's completely tone deaf, but it seems to be her, uh, her motto. But if you go on TV in Hollywood, you know, the Ellen Show on, on location, I think most celebrities, if not all of them, would have been dressed in very expensive clothing during the Ellen interviews. One thing I want to say about Ellen to really highlight how nasty she is, this is a very famous clip. I'm not going to play it. It was Mariah Carey, and she was pregnant, but no one knew, and she didn't want to tell anyone. So um, Ellen knew this, and so in the middle of the interview, she got out champagne and forced, tried to force Mariah Carey to drink it to force her to come clean that she's pregnant. And she did. And guess what? She miscarried soon after. And that's why women don't like to say they're pregnant in the early stages because they're still in that dangerous period where they could miscarry. And that's exactly what happened. And Ellen drove Mariah to a very uncomfortable, you can see it on her face. She's like, Ellen, don't do this to me. Why are you doing this to me? Because she's a bitch. Ellen is vile. She's a monster. I'm glad she's canceled. It makes all the sense in the world that she's friends with Megan. Um, and it's really uh, megan where's your team you know your team of pr people haven't they done the research number one didn't they realize she's canceled that you know she's your neighbor i get it but she's canceled no one wants to be associated with her anymore and she made fun of you she made fun of you you know what i imagine they advised her not to maybe and she went nah i do what i want exactly that is her modus operandi that is all megan is do you tell some megan not to do something she will do it God forbid someone should tell her she should take care of her kids because then she'll do the opposite just for the sake of saying, you can't tell me what to do. Anywho, so I think we're going to wrap this up. We're almost at the three hour mark. I probably will try to edit it down a little bit, but another long one for you because you like it. Um, also, we did have a lot to say. It's not we like did. we dragged it out. This was all genuinely, you know, topics that we wanted to talk about. So yeah, let us know what you think about everything. If you want to share a cringe rejection story or you are the rejector or the rejectee, let us know. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll sign off. We do have yeah. to film an exclusive Patreon episode this week. It is about toxic femininity, which is very much linked to the likes of Megan and Amber Heard. So we're going to discuss that. And patrons, we'll see you there. Otherwise, thank you patrons for sponsoring this podcast. And again, if you want to support us for free, just hit subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment because that's all you can do now, really, apart yeah. from liking. So, yeah. You want to say anything? No, we're all good. All right. We will catch you in a future episode. See you next week. Bye-bye.